It began in 1951, and it won't seem the same without them. Woody Hayes, the coaching legend who stormed the sidelines for Ohio State. And for that school up north, Bo Schimbeckler, who was hired in 1969, did likewise at Michigan. They breathed fire into a college football rivalry that became one of the best in the nation. And now for the first time since 51, back when Harry Truman was president, Ohio State and Michigan will get ready to do battle without either Woody or Bo on the sideline. It won't be the same. But for the new Michigan coach, Gary Moeller, it's a bit of a homecoming. He was the captain of the Buckeyes back in 1962. of 90,000. You are looking live at the Buckeyes in Ohio Stadium, Columbus, Ohio. John Cooper and his team will do battle against the Wolverines of Michigan. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. The Buckeyes still with an outside chance of getting to the Rose Bowl. They must beat Michigan and hope that Minnesota either ties or beats Iowa. And some news will be made in Columbus this week. The Buckeyes have been red hot. John Cooper's done a marvelous job down the stretch, and the Ohio State president, Gordon Gee, will reward him next week. They will extend his contract. Let me bring in my partner, Dick Vermeil. Dick, I don't think anybody deserves it anymore for the coaching job that he's done the last month than John Cooper. Well, John Cooper and Ohio State Buckeyes have won five in a row, and he deserves a contract extension. Where they've improved the most, though, Brent, is on defense. They lead the Big Ten now in giving up the fewest number of points, and offensively, the fine freshman running back, Robert Smith, no longer running like a freshman. And in fact, he reminds me of O.J. Simpson when I saw him running as a young freshman at San Francisco City College. But as Woody would say, that school up north, they come in here favored. How can that be? Well, they should be favored. Heck, you know, they're only nine points away from being undefeated. A four-point loss to Notre Dame early in the year. The game could have gone either way. Two one-point losses in the middle of the season when they were playing without their best linebacker and without their best defensive lineman. They're a little healthier today. Maybe one of the best teams in the country. I can tell you're fired. I'm pumped. Can't wait to see how that Michigan offensive line does against the Ohio State defense. We'll be coming right back to Columbus. And is here too. A little bit of a new wrinkle involving the footballs for this game. Mark Jones, what's that story downstairs? Well, Brent Dick, it's interesting to know that each team gets to use the football of its preference on offense. Today, Ohio State will be using a normal football, while Michigan, on the other hand, will be using an unconventional type of football called the double grip football. It's brand new. Now, it's the football on the left coming up right here. It has dimples or grooves in it, much like a golf ball. And Michigan has been using it for about three games now, and the players all love it. Elvis Gerber the quarterback says he loves it the receivers say it gives them a type of suction and it sticks to their hands so it helps them in that respect you know it's interesting too that tests showed that it travels about 13 yards further on average than the normal football in adverse weather conditions today hey we've got those adverse weather conditions windy with a chance of rain so it'll be interesting to see if it's a factor guys will have a look out for those all right mark that's a wrinkle of charlie finley and when they go from right to left here with that breeze at their back, Michigan hopes that that dimpled football will work wonders for their passing game. Gary Moeller played here for three years. He has also been a head coach here. That was with Illinois. And he was the last victim of the late Woody Hayes back here when he brought the fighting Illini in. And he suffered the final setback that Woody Hayes was able to score with a victory here. Meanwhile, on the Ohio State side, it will be the veteran quarterback number 15, Greg Fry, his last game in Columbus. And he hopes to lead the Buckeyes down to Jacksonville, Florida, if not Pasadena, because the winner of this game, if they don't make it to the Rose Bowl, will go to the Gator Bowl and the loser to the Liberty Bowl. Brent, Gary Moe, the head coach at Michigan, told me he felt that if there was an advantage anywhere, it would be the advantage to Ohio State in that their quarterback 
Greg Fry is a five-year senior, and that extra experience coming into a big game like this is a real edge for the, that team. Ohio State won the toss. They deferred. Michigan will get the ball to start the game. And that means you will see one of the best kickoff returning teams in the nation. Desmond Howard, who leads the country, will be back deep. And we would expect that Ohio State will attempt to keep it away as Tim Williams will put the ball on the tee and we'll be underway. You know, I'm sure they had good reason for making that decision, but I think with Michigan's big physical offensive line and I won the toss, I'd put my offense on the field first because right now defensively they ohio state could be playing without alonzo spellman the big 270 pound defensive tackle and they'll be playing a smaller tackle on greg skrepnik the 325 pounder i'd want to put that battle off as long as i could <laughs> underway alexander's hands at the goal line Trying to get an alley on the outside, and he is going to be out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Benny Clark, number seven, a cornerback there defensively on the kickoff team. Elvis Gerback with 16 touchdown passes for the Wolverines. And behind him, his leading rusher, John Vaughn, but expect to see plenty of the freshman Ricky Powers. Gerard Bunch, he beat the Buckeyes in the fourth quarter a year ago. There's that great offensive line, Dean Dingman, Kodak All-American already. And the rest of that talented bunch. Gerbeck, who likes to throw on first down. Gary Muller calling the plays for the Wolverines. Starting out the game with two tight ends, two wide receivers, balancing up the defense. Vaughn on first down, no daylight. The defense was there for the Buckeyes, and let's meet that group. Ken Coleman steps into the starting lineup in place of the injured Alonzo Spellman, sideline with a bad ankle. Jason Simmons coming on strong, and Steve Tovar is one of the best linebackers in the Big Ten. Benny Clark leads a secondary that includes Peel, Polini, and Foster Paul. Second down, 11 yards to go. Bunch back in front of Vaughn. Gerbeck to throw his first pass of the game down the middle and open is Howard at the 35-yard line. That play action pass really draws the linebackers. You'll see play action fake, nice fake. He gets a ball fake right seat now, puts a hand on the hip, comes back and he's throwing down there. The linebackers would normally in a zone defense drop into this uh, zone area, but the play action throws him on the line of scrimmage. 15-yard gain for Howard and a Wolverine first down at their own 35. Alexander again in motion. Bunch the fullback. Tovar riding him to the 40-yard line. Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Ohio State, said that what they had to do is not line up physically and take them on man for man. They want to line up. You'll see them, the defense here in red, they're going to move the defense around. They're going to slant and stunt. They don't believe they can sit in there and take them on physically. The offensive line for Michigan being too physical, too big. Second down and five for the Wolverines. Van Dyne steps in motion. Vaughn, the ball carrier, trying to get outside and could not avoid Jimmy Peel. This is an example of what Bill Young said. He said the next thing we're going to do after moving the defense, slanting them one way or the other, we're going to line our safety up on the line of scrimmage. Now, he's up on the line of scrimmage to the right side of your screen. He's going to be up in an eight and a nine-man front as he cuts back. The safety, you'll see, beyond the line of scrimmage making the play. This will force Michigan to get into their passing attack much sooner. A four-yard loss. Third and nine for Gerbeck. Two talented and dangerous wide receivers. Gerbeck straight back, has time, throws to the fullback, and Bunch breaks a tackle, and he's out. Oh, oh, Buckeye ball. It can be returned by Cook.
The one thing Elvis Gerback normally does, and he did it this time, is he throws the short passes in a position that are easily caught and then easily advanced. See, he can turn and run. But Bunch gets the ball out in his right hand there. See, and he gets it knocked out. There it is. As Brent said, you can now run the football, as in pro football, as long as it's crossed the line of scrimmage. Another look. You've got to tuck the ball under tight. He's got it out in his hands. My gosh. Coach going to kill him on Monday. <laughs> See that? You've got to keep it tucked in. Number 48, Mark Pellini, was the defender that knocked it out. Fly and the Buckeyes with the first down at the Wolverine 20-yard line. Graham, the fullback, straight ahead. Eric Anderson, number 37, stepping up at the point of attack, along with 92, Mike Evans. Now, behind Fry, here are the skill players for the Buckeyes. Dick has already mentioned Robert Smith, the talented freshman. Scotty Graham, the fullback. Jeff Graham and Bobby Olive, excellent wide receivers. There's the offensive line, not as dominating as Michigan's, but a great center in Dan Beatty. This is Graham in motion behind Fry. Smith, his first carry. John Milligan, number 30, the linebacker, bringing him down, and we'll meet that Wolverine defense right now. Mike Evans, number 92. He must come along today. Chris Hutchison, also extremely talented. Milligan and Anderson are the inside linebackers for the Wolverines. Otis Williams replacing the injured Trip Wellborn today. Otis Williams is an ex a, a red shirt junior, so he's had a little playing time. He came in with 13 tackles and one sack, two tackles for a loss, so he's been in there. I wouldn't doubt to see David Ritter, number 29, replace him early in the ballgame. Third and five for the Buckeyes. Quick pop by Fry through behind the receiver. His tight end that time was Likovich, and he threw the ball behind him, so it'll be a field goal opportunity for the Buckeyes. What you're going to see here is a hot receiver principle. They red dog the inside linebackers and they went to Likovich as quickly as they could. Just try to pop him into that open area. Good adjustment by Ohio State. Just threw it behind him. Number four, Kurt Horsey to hold. Number 50, Jim Horsey's at center. Ted Williams will attempt the field goal. Kirk Herbstreit will hold it. It's a 33-yard attempt by Williams. With the wind in his back, the Buckeyes move ahead. Three to nothing. Taking advantage of the fumble by Gary Moeller's fullback. Great football. Ten minutes and 57 seconds left in the first quarter. The Buckeyes kicking off for the second time in this game. Williams, who put them ahead three to nothing. Howard and Alexander are deep for Michigan. He'll kick it on the ground and keep it out of Howard's hands, so a short man will bring it back from the 25-yard line. That's Leggett. Here's what set up that field goal, the fumble and the first pass reception by Jared Bunch is coming out to the left side of your screen. Now you'll see he makes the catch. He turns around and becomes the ball carrier, but he gets the ball out away from, freeze it right there. Look at this. See, he's got the ball out away from his body. That set the tone for the fumble down the field. He's got to get it tucked in right now. It's out away from his body again. See it out there? Too much confidence carrying the ball out there like that. Vaughn and Bunch still in at running back as our referee, Tom Quinn, now in a discussion with Gerbeck and also the side judge getting the line set on the far side of the field, moving them back just a bit from the sideline. Gary Moe, the head football coach at Michigan and also the offensive coordinator, said they want to run the ball, but they recognize they're going to have to get the ball in their wide receiver's hands because these guys are the guys that light up the scoreboard. Elvis Gerbeck, Hines off to Vaughn, and defensively, Greg Smith, the nose man, broke the play up. Gerbeck is from Willoughby Hills, Ohio. And he is not the only Michigan Buckeye. 22 players on the Michigan team played high school football in Ohio. There are some of the more talented ones whom you'll be hearing about here today. Ricky Powers, the freshman sensation from Akron, Ohio, checks in at tailback. Second down and 11 for Michigan. 
They run the draw it's with there. Powers swinging outside. First down, Wolverines, and what a future he has. He really does. You know, I really think he's a better running back than Vaughn, and he's just beating him out. You'll see it's a draw play here. They set, and they want to run more weak. You'll see the defense all shifted strong side here. They give it to him, and here he comes in a nice draw play. See the draw? Now he gets the lead block right there, at least 81. A true freshman, and only the third one at Michigan to rush for better than 500 yards. Gerbeck on first down, throws outside to Howard, and well defended by the Buckeyes as Foster Park, number 22, was there. They want to throw their screens. They want to get the ball out in the hands of, of a Desmond Howard. He's the number three receiver in the Big Ten. He's the number two receiver in the history of University of Michigan behind Anthony Carter. So you know that he has talent, and he has that great acceleration. You give him a crack, and he takes off. Second down and 10. Howard moves over to the slot. Three wide receivers for Gerbeck in Michigan. Fake the run. Gerbeck down the middle, overthrew him, almost intercepted. And that was Mark Pellini who had a shot at an interception at the 30-yard line as Gerbeck overthrew his wide receiver. You'll see what the play-action fake does in freezing the linebackers. Now your receiver comes down and he works into this hole. The linebackers would normally be back in that zone. They can't get there because they have to acknowledge it. The fake there. See, it freezes him up in there. Now he comes back inside that zone. Boy, there it is. Just throwing a little too high. Should have been intercepted. One running back in this third and ten formation for the Wolverines. And on the draw play, they'll use Powers. Short of the first down, Michigan forced the punt. Trying to change up, break powers with the draw play. Good call on third down. You know that Ohio State's going to be coming after him. They're stunning the defensive line. Linebackers are getting upfield. Outside guys, that is. He can't find a big enough crack to get the yards. Eddie Ascona into punt. And the Buckeyes practiced all week in trying to storm Ascona. They're I think going to come after him. I think they'll rush far more than they try to return because they've only had seven returns against Michigan all year. He lets the coverage unit get down. Not many of his punts have been returned this year. And he puts Ohio State inside the 20-yard line. 8.27, the official time in the first quarter. Ohio State leading Michigan by a field goal. Things look very dismal for John Cooper earlier in the season. A controversial ending to both the USC and the Indiana games. Then he underwent back surgery. But now the Buckeyes on a five-game winning streak, the hottest team in the Big Ten, and still harboring a chance to get to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. Fry handing off to Robert Smith on the first down. There are three teams with a chance of getting to the Rose Bowl. Iowa in control. If they win today against Minnesota, they will go, and Beth Ruiak will be covering that game. We'll hear her special reports at halftime. Ohio State needs an Iowa loss to Minnesota and a victory over Michigan. Illinois needs an Iowa loss and an Ohio State tie with Michigan, plus a victory over Northwestern and the fighting Illini could be headed to Pasadena. That is not out of the realm of the possible. An Ohio State-Michigan game in this situation could end in a tie. Not unheard of. These two teams, if they don't get to the Rose Bowl, are battling for the Gator Bowl and the Liberty Bowl. The freshman, Smith again, short of the first down, and out to the 22-yard line. So many times, this game has determined the Big Ten Championship, and it figures to play a role again here today. Decided the Big Ten title 29 times since 35. You know, Robert Smith, you see on your screen, we had the opportunity to broadcast his opening game as a freshman running back right here in this stadium, and there is no comparison between him then and today. He, he's added so much to his style of running, cutback running, changing, change of pace, burst, and a little more power and more physical. Very fine running back. On third and five, fly to throw to Olive. Ohio State first down and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. 
What you see here is just a, a, a possession down out pattern. See the corners playing back off. I'm sure that he audible to it. He's just paid it. Going to take advantage of that. To get help, that linebacker has to drop underneath a little flatter, not quite so deep. Brian Stabline is the wide receiver out to Fry's right. Graham to his left. And he'll throw on first down. Great play fake. Bought a little time. Wolverines close back in, and it's incomplete. He, that was Mike Evans in pursuit of it. He wanted to come out there on a naked faking one way and come out there without any offensive lineman in protection. But Michigan did a real good job in discipline. Jeff Graham and Bobby Olive, these two wide receivers do a great job. Bobby Olive, listen, is 185 pounds, but I'll guarantee you, if he weighs that much, he's got four pair of shoulder pads on. I saw him in the locker room yesterday. He's got to be 160 pounds at the best. His hairdo makes him much faster. <laughs> Second and 10. And it's Graham bursting to a first down across the 45-yard line where Veda Murray, the free safety, brings him down after a 13-yard bolt. This is a very clever play. What they do is they fake the old counter trap play over here, bring the back to Phil. Now they run the dr drop back pass draw off it. Very clever, very clever. Instead of running the counter trap, they're running a draw play with it. Very well conceived by offensive coordinator Jim Coletto. He played tailback against Michigan in last year's loss to the Wolverines. Michigan has won four of the last five games between these two rivals. Fry with time, oh, incomplete, hello. through high. <laughs> and Lance Dutton smashed into Olive. Bobby Olive made a catch like that two weeks ago against Iowa, but that Lance Dutton wasn't there. <laughs> Boy, did he belt him. Again, play action. Now, watch the faking of the quarterback back there. He does a real nice job. Sets up. He's looking either for the post or the square in pattern. He goes for it at his highest point. He's actually dropping the ball before contact. And yet, that young man, Bobby Olive, a walk-on, no scholarship. He earned a scholarship. He's come up the hard way, has had a great year, and made those catches in the past. Today, he drops one. His helmet decorated with those Buckeye leaves, indicating superb performances throughout the course of a season and a career. Fry changing the play up at the line of scrimmage. On second and 10, Smith, the ball carrier, and he gains three or four yards before T.J. Osmond, number 94, tackles him. You know, when a wide receiver takes a hit like that, they don't need a Buckeye lead. They ought to give him a Congressional Medal of Honor. <laughs> oh, that hurts a bit. I'll tell you, and you've got to go back in that area when you're called upon later in the game thinking, I wonder if that doctor is still around. <laughs> Likovich, the tight end. Olive and Graham, the wide men, toward the top of your screen and the wide side of the field. Fry will roll in that direction. Throws to Olive, who is all alone for another Ohio State first down. They took the inside receiver and ran a flat pattern. The man responsible for coverage, you'll see Graham, number 84. He will take the receiver to the sideline. Stretch the defense now. He'll stretch him. Now he opens up that zone inside. There it is. The defender, Doughton, playing way too far off if they're in a form of man coverage. He's got to get up there a lot tighter. 14 yards, and the Michigan secondary without their All-American safety, Trip Wellborn. Otis Williams, who replaced him in that lineup, was on the chase of Graham, and Olive broke free. No more talented tandem in the Big Ten than Olive and Graham. Now it's first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Michigan needs to stiffen here defensively, and they do on the first down running play. Number 30 is Milligan, John Milligan, the senior inside linebacker. Out on the inside of that, along with T.J. Osmond, the nose man from Pittsburgh. Like Milligan, he too is a senior. Milligan is the inside linebacker that missed those five games early in the year with a broken foot, and they really missed him. You know, I wonder what his parents are doing today. You know, they're both Ohio State graduates. <laughs> what do you think they're doing? They're cheering they're hard for their son. For their son, you bet. <laughs> Time remaining first quarter. Five defensive backs now in the game. Here's the 
was the toss to Robert Smith across the 30-yard line before Mike Evans brings him down. We have a flag down. I think it's holding on OSU. Yes, it is. The veteran Tom Quinn, Lorenzo Clemens, his umpire, made that call. Well, coming up tonight, it's more college football here on ABC, a special primetime matchup. Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish against USC. How will Todd Marinovich do tonight against that Irish defense? Should be a great game tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy will be calling that action for you. There's the Quinn crew working here today. The same crew we had last week in Iowa City. You know, in talking to Jim Coletto, the offensive coordinator for Ohio State, he was concerned about being able to pass protect the rush of Michigan. So far, they're doing a pretty good job with it. Coletto's right there to the left side of your screen, just sent in the play, but their game plan centers around throwing the ball more on first down with aggressive run blocking. They've done that. If they've been completing them. Then they want to come with misdirection to sort of slow down that quick defense and then they want to try to get a big play with something that Michigan has not seen a new play put in the game plan specifically for this one second and 18 for the Buckeyes and fly will run out of it this will be third and long and again TJ Osmond the nose guard doing a standout job defensively again they came back with that counter trap draw play which I have never seen run before as we take a look at this from the end zone you're going to see people move here like it's going to be a trap play, but they're going to hand off a draw play. Clever. See, here it is, Joe Pass with a quarterback. He's going to go up there and run the draw. I have never seen that one run. Good little wrinkle. Raymond Harris into the backfield. Oh, come on. It's more exciting than that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> now third and 17. Edwards. From the slot, cutting into the middle. Fry going deep to Graham. And Graham to the 25 yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. Lance Dotton, number 22, bringing him down. Ohio State did a real good job of picking up the pass rush stunts, including a linebacker this time. You'll see a running back step up, and there comes, there comes. Eric Anderson 37 he's picked up there now there's a hole in the middle of the defense and he gets him the ball Graham is leading the Big Ten in it's, average yards per catch. It's coming back. Is Illegal it? procedure was called against Ohio State. He called it. Illegal procedure on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. I didn't recognize that from up here. Can we see that? Here's all 22. I don't let's see. There's five guys. I don't know. I can't see it. Maybe it's the angle. The officials have a better seat than we do. The wide receiver down toward the bottom of the screen was back off the line of scrimmage. The line man on the Ohio State sideline right close to Coach Cooper saw that he was not up on the line of scrimmage. They had only six men. You could barely pick it up. Now it is third and 22. He must have had a yardstick with him. Directly back, and the whistle blows. Play was stopped just before the snap. They're stopping themselves so far in this drive. Move the ball, call it back, holding. Most of the time, a delay of the game penalty is not the quarterback's fault. It's the coach's fault for not getting the play in soon enough. Actually, the clock was stopped prior to that snap, so the play was came off the bench too late. Cooper doing a little politicking down there on the sideline. Ohio State has dominated the first three as a big offensive lineman. The one thing you've got to do is keep moving. Don't stand still. You've got a good running back coming up your back. Get out of the way. <laughs> He's running over his own guy. Jeff Bowman steps back to punt and Desmond Howard has replaced Wilburn as the punt returner. 
and Will is being that dangerous force with the kickoffs. Will he handle the punts as well as Welburn? That's what Michigan fans are wondering. He will not get an opportunity here. It'll go out of the end zone and come out on the 20. Ohio State three, Michigan nothing, and timeout in Columbus. Gary Moeller, the head football coach and offensive coordinator at Michigan, told me last night, he said, we're going to use some no huddle here, see if we can't control the tempo. Here they are, no huddle. Powers, again the tailback. Alexander in motion for Michigan. Gerback will use Powers on first down, and he battles across the 30-yard line before Clark, who hit him first, can slow him up. Powers has the stronger running legs than Bond does. He can break tackles. He can run through the arms. You better get your shoulder pads on him. Now, this young man is only a true freshman. He gets blocks at the point of attack. He doesn't have to have everybody knocked down. See, shoulder pads down, feet still moving, very strong legs. Moeller said he has legs like an offensive lineman. They're big, strong legs. Clark injured for Ohio State. That would be a big loss for the Buckeyes. And there was a penalty called against Michigan. The coaching staff of the Wolverines unhappy on the far side. But Michigan is penalized on this play. Vinnie Clark is their fastest deep football player on defense, and he's also their best defensive back. Let's see, a number seven working inside out. Now here he gets him popped there. He gets him down. Let's continue the play. We can see what happens. Ooh, he got his knee trapped in there. His left leg got caught underneath. Some of his own pursuit coming in there and hit him from behind. Well, the fellow who fired up the Buckeyes with a pregame talk downstairs with Mark Jones. Let's go down to Chris Spielman and Mark. Yeah, Brent Dick, you know, this guy knows something about knocking heads as a linebacker. Chris, you played here at Ohio State, and what's your most memorable experience when it comes to this uh, Michigan game? Well, obviously, in my mind, the most memorable experience was when uh, Earl got fired on Monday. We went to Michigan with all the Earl headbands and came out and beat him up there. I'm sure that Coach Bruce appreciated that. But tell me a little more about, you told me moments ago that pro ball doesn't compare to this kind of stuff. I don't think you... I think you can put a value on, on what the atmosphere, the tradition, the excitement, the band, the fans, and everything. It's something that I was uh, fortunate to be a part of, and uh, I'm honored to be here today and, and be a guest of the Ohio State football team. I saw a pair of uh, cleats and some shoulder pads in your bag. Uh, you thinking about suiting up? Well, I, I just played on Thursday. I need about 48 hours to recover. I'm getting older. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for joining us, Chris. Uh, we'll keep wearing those colors, and we'll speak to you later. Thank you very much. Brent Dick, back to you. Thank you, Mark. There's a man who is simply a football player. Didn't quite measure up to the NFL standards, but you can't measure the size of a man's heart. And Chris Fieldman has all of that. Now playing with the Detroit Lions. And in the Pro Bowl. Gerback on second down for Michigan. Throwing complete to Howard, who busts across to the 44-yard line. And a Wolverine first down. They... They figured if that play worked real well for Ohio State, they'll run the same thing. Outside receiver on the top of your screen, 21. He's going to run a curl in, inside slot, taking the defender out. He opens up the zone. There he is. He gets up. Beautiful catch, going for the ball at his highest point. Now he's a running back. Good job. Lance Price is now in at the corner. Michigan trying to go to work with Vinny Clark out of the lineup. Alonzo Spellman, injured ankle and all, is trying it defensively for the Buckeyes. They get around him that time, and they bust across midfield before Price and Ken Coleman, who is also replacing Spellman much of the time today, can bring him down. The preliminary word from Mark Jones downstairs is that Clark suffered a hyperextended elbow, and they expect him back after they wrap it. Didn't look like an elbow injury to me from up here. I hope that's all it was. The first quarter ends here in Columbus. Ohio State with a field goal and Michigan mounting a drive. We'll be right back. For Buckeye fans, good news as Vinny Clark checks back into the game and that hyperextended left elbow has been taped on the sideline. They'll need him against Howard. Howard comes out wide to the right. They are locked up one-on-one -on -one. out to the right side of Gerback. Second down and short with Alexander in motion and turning back. Powers, the freshman for the first down. Look at the power. Good strength in there. 
Dick, here are some guys that you could use on your yard back in uh, Pennsylvania yeah. during timeouts. Yeah, look at it. But the thing is, I have cattle all over mine. These guys are out here replacing the divots in this beautiful turf, moving around, make sure. Look at that. Nice saw there. He's putting it back in place. I know they're not looking for Easter legs. I know that. <laughs> I think they've got some young women on that crew, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now it is a first and ten. Powers, the freshman from Akron, Ohio, starting to carry the load. The wind is at Michigan's back for this quarter. Powers with a big hole. Blasts across the 25-yard line in his personal duel with Robert Smith. Ricky Powers is starting to step up right now. Tom Doring, number 73, the big offensive left tackle right here, comes off and gets a great base block. They're all coming off pretty good, but he gets the point of attack just nailed, gives him the nice run. He's blocking on big Alonzo Spellman, number 99, who is playing on a, a sore ankle. Nice block by Tom Doring. You'll see what I'm talking about. See, he just drilled him, knocked him right out of there. Look at the power in this young man's legs. Five carries, 52 yards, and he'll get a breather. Bunch is the lone running back. The Michigan fullback checks in, and he'll be the ball carrier. And he carried Greg Smith with him for about four yards that time. Greg Smith has been a pain in the neck to these people the whole first quarter. He's really quick at that nose guard position. He bounces around. He's a very bright young man. Academic All-American this year. He's been academic All-Big Ten a couple times. A real smart young man and a real quick nose guard. Dick, we really want to welcome KTMF-TV, Channel 23 in Missoula, Montana, our newest ABC affiliate, the University of Montana, located in Missoula, a beautiful campus out there in the foothills of the Rockies. Ricky Powers back in at tailback. He is behind Bunch. Unbalanced line set left. Van Dyne comes in motion behind Gerbeck. Best drive of the game for Michigan. And this is the reason why Powers bolts to the 10-yard line. What happened? The backside offensive guard, the backside offensive guard got the cutoff block. Got the cutoff block. Now you'll see the start in one direction. All right, now watch him cut back. He's not going to run at the point of attack. Defense is pursued. He gets back, and all he needed back there was one good block, and he got it from his offensive guard, Dean Dingman, number 78. 63 yards for the freshman from Akron, Ohio, already. A first and 10 for the Wolverines at the Buckeye 11, going into the teeth of the noise here in the shoe. Powers cutting back. Penalty marker is thrown as he continues to battle before Steve Tovar, number 58, brings him down. Coach Moeller likes to throw the ball down in here because he everybody looks at their big offensive line and they stack up down there and they really get their defensive butts up in the air and come across the line of scrimmage. And I won't I wouldn't be surprised to see him start throwing it down in here. Here's big Alonzo Spellman right here. He takes a little early move. He's playing on that left ankle that's a little bit sorry. <laughs> oh, get back, Alonzo. <laughs> He's a little too big to get back quick enough. He got back all the way to Cooper's bench. <laughs> they just took him out. <laughs> I'll tell you, Spellman, is, he didn't play last week. He hurt his ankle two weeks ago in the Iowa game. Couldn't play last week. But uh, he's learning to play with a little pain, which is uh, good for him. That's what football does for you. You know, there's going to be a lot of days and later in life when you got to get up and go to work and you don't feel like it. I knew there was a reason why I didn't like playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 coaches, you mush burgers are all I like, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is good for a kid. Hey, there are, a lot of times he's going to not feel like wanting to go to work in the morning. He's going to have a cold. His wife's going to be nagging on him. And he's still going to have to get up and go to work. <laughs> Bentley moves the ball to the Buckeyes, six-yard line. First and goal for Michigan. It's Bunch stopped at the five-yard line. Jason Simmons, number 91, hitting him first. Inside the 20-yard line, behind Kerbeck, the Wolverines have scored 30 touchdowns in 43 possessions plus seven field goals. That's outstanding execution inside the 20. When you look at 30 touchdowns, that's what really, I think, measures efficiency in your offense. You can score the field goals, yes, but getting the seven pointers in there is the critical thing. It shows good coaching. It shows good game planning. 
double tight end formation. Howard is the lone running back. Alexander and Howard are the wide men. A tight end may break free in this formation. And it'll be Powers at the four-yard line. He's stopped by Tom Leese, number 81. At first by 81, Tom Leese. Tom Lease is a hospitality management. He was not very hospitable, <laughs> hospitable, whatever that word is at that time. Was it? <laughs> Here he is, filling the hole, just like he's supposed to, working off his block, moving inside out, careful not to overrun the play. I think Bo Schimbeck was in that play. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> he might like to, though, I'll tell you that. There's no way he's ever going to turn off the fire that he had inside him. Here's it's Coach Cooper. Out. Third down. Michigan can get a first down inside the one-yard line without scoring. Burback calls a timeout. You know, I'm surprised they haven't gone to the no huddle down in here and try to loosen up that defense that way. We'll take a break and come right back. 11 minutes left in the first half. Today. And Jack Nicholas is hoping right now that the Buckeye defense of his can hold Michigan on third and two at the three. I'd, I'd like to see him go ahead and put the pressure on the big offensive line and give him two downs to make the first down or touchdown. Go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you throw the pass here, it's incomplete. You've got to kick the field goal. It's Powers. Breaks free and will be down at the 10 as big Alonzo Spellman hit him first. You'll see big Alonzo Spellman. He raised that ankle doesn't hurt anymore, does it? Here he is right here. He gets pressure upfield. That's amazing what the motion and intensity can do to you. They block it. They tried to kick him out. He got too much penetration. And when you let that six foot six, 270 pound young player get up there, <laughs> look at him. He's pumped. That a boy. That ankle doesn't hurt, does it? That's it. J.D. Carlson with a chance to tie it. 27 yard field goal attempt. Ken Solem the holder. Puts it down, it's low, but it went through. That ball was tipped, too. Carlson's field goal ties the game with 10 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half. Ohio State three, Michigan three. Ohio State scored first after Michigan fumbled the ball away. Williams kicked a 33-yard field goal. Now with Spellman stopping Powers for a loss of seven, Carlson kicks a 27-yard. Deadlocked at three, and Michigan to kick it off. High and short, Dante Lee at the 12. No alley and almost does cough it up. He put the ball down. But Ohio State jumped on it and saving the day with Coleman Wallace knocking the ball free. Number 85 for the Buckeyes. Cedric Saunders all over it. Here's that big play defensively. Dick, Dean Dingman was going to pull here and come over and trap. Freeze it there. What happened, the defensive lineman Spellman got up too far. The fullback going for here, the tight end here. He just decided to turn up inside. The penetration broke the play. That was not what they wanted to do. Good defense by Spellman. Raymond Harris is the tailback behind Graham. The fake to him, fly on the roll, hits Scotty Graham. Down at the 16-yard line with Lance Dotton, and they are coming right after Dotton. There's a penalty flag thrown again on the far side of the field. Too many penalties on Ohio State so far in this ballgame. You've got to control your emotion, your intensity, and use it to help you on the snap, not prior to or after, just during the snap. Especially in a game with this magnitude. We have the rivalry. And the offense. The, first the coaches told me, the Ohio State staff told me, our guys have been ready to play since Tuesday. <laughs> There's those Buckeye leaves. 
Greg I started Bi the season wearing that visor, but then it rained and they played in bad weather a couple of times, and he was bothered by the moisture. Since then, he has taken the visor off, and after beating Iowa on that last second pass to Bobby Olive, he'll probably never wear that visor again. After the penalty, the Buckeyes with the ball on their own six-yard line. Fumble, the snap, and Fly will wrap it up, but it will be second and 15. Oh, you don't think that should ever happen, but it does. I saw it happen in the Atlanta Falcon-Philadelphia Eagle game last week. It happens. It should never happen. Normally, the, the center drops his tail and is blocked too soon before the exchange is made, and his tail sinks and pulls away from the football, and the quarterback doesn't get it. Now, Fry, you know, Fry was just granted a postgraduate scholarship by the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Greg Fry. He's a bright young man. He's an English major. Michigan will attempt not to let Ohio State out. The wind is at Michigan's back. Raymond Harris, the ball carrier, and this will make it third and long with Chris Hutchinson, number 97, there defensively for the Wolverines. The big thing down here is don't make the stupid mistake. Don't turn the ball over. You're having an even football game. Sit in there and battle. Be content to punt and cover it, but don't do anything foolish with the football. Bobby Olive brings the play in from John Cooper's sideline. Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, told me, he said, you know, Dick, I'm really concerned about their skilled people. They have three or four guys that can beat you on one play. And Fly will throw out of his own end zone. Standing up, goes to the far side. Tipped and intercepted by Dutton at the 20-yard line. Lance Dutton comes up with the tipped interception. Advantage Wolverines. That's just what I was talking about. Don't make the mistake. They did it. They're trying a vertical stretch pattern with play action, faking, holding the linebackers, taking the slot man now, and throwing back across the grain now, trying to lay it in the seam. It's there. He just throws it too high. It's batted in the air, and there's Lance Dotton picking off his fifth interception for the year. Don't turn it over down in that area. Good job of defense. First turnover by Ohio State. Michigan turned it over early. The young quarterback who came up with his fifth interception of the season. First and ten for Michigan. Gerback hands to Powers, and it was Alexander on the reverse. Alexander trying to cross them up as he did me, getting inside the 20-yard line with Jason Simmons there defensively. Well, Alexander's one of those quick kids. He's run two reverses already. Hadn't made many yards with the 14. Faking in there to Powers. He flips it back here. He's coming around. But good defense by Lease. Good defense by, uh, that's number 22, Foster Polk. Good discipline holding the defense over there. Side defense staying at home for the Buckeyes. Wide side of the field to Gerbeck's left. Powers, the lone running back in this formation. Van Dyne in the slot. It's Powers behind the left side, and he blasts his way to the 12-yard line. The talented freshman keeping the pressure on with Steve Tovar bringing him down. I just keep giving him the ball. Don't get fancy. Keep giving him the ball. With those strong legs, I kind of believe he's the kind of guy that just sort of picks up tempo, picks up energy as he goes and gets running better and better and better. That was coming into the game, but Robert Smith, who was used much earlier in the season than Powers. Because of the way Vaughn started, Powers did not get much of a chance. But here this afternoon, it's all Ricky Powers. 62 yards in nine carries. Here is his 10th carry. And down at the 13 with Tommy Leach making a nice stop for the Buckeyes. Obviously there, they're really thinking, hey, if we don't get it with a running play, we'll go for the field goal. We feel good about our kicker. He's been kicking real well. He's came into this ball game with 18 of field goals of 21 attempts inside the 40, seven for nine in this area. So he's pretty efficient. But I'll tell you this, Gerback has been throwing the ball efficiency inside the 22. He's got a lot of touchdown passes, 16 coming into the ball game. Solon, a backup quarterback, will put the ball down at the 20-yard line. And the 30-yard field goal cuts through the uprights 
Michigan takes its first lead of the day. Following an interception, the Wolverines settle for a field goal, and it's 6-3 with 6.05 to go. Frequently on Michigan Ohio State Saturday, we get nasty weather, but not today here in Columbus, Ohio. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Is some wind, which will be at Michigan's back. They lead for the first time. J.D. Carlson with two field goals on the afternoon, a 27-yarder and a 30-yarder, and it is 6-3. Lee and Robert Smith back deep, and now Robert Smith with something to prove, and they will not kick it to him. It'll be Lee at the 7. 15. Spins out to the 22. And a reminder that coming up next on ABC Sports, golf's most entertaining weekend. Jack Nicholas, Greg Norman, Nick Faldo, Curtis Strange goes shot for shot. The Skins game moves to ABC. They're going to play at one of the toughest courses in America, PGA West in La Quinta. It was designed by Pete Dye, and golfers everywhere dream of going out there and playing a round of golf. And today you'll get a chance to watch the skin. I played out there. I burned up the course. Burned it up. <laughs> And then you got to the back nine. <laughs> no, I got off the first tee. <laughs> first and ten. Fry off a fake. Throws to Graham coming out of the backfield. And Graham is short of the first down. Well, Mark Jones, what's going on with the defensive unit of the Buckeyes? Well, guys, defensive coordinator Bill Young just told the defensive unit that we've got to be nice to the officials. He was really stressing that because so far Ohio State has been penalized a lot more than Michigan has in the game. He also added, guys, we have to stay close, which reiterated what the coaches told us yesterday. they got to be in it come fourth quarter. Guys? Yeah, well, he's, he's ahead. The penalty's going against him. He says, don't yell at those guys. Don't get mad at them. Just give them respect. Call them sir. In fact. Second and short. Smith. Yeah. Getting the first down before T.J. Osmond can stop him at the point of attack. Robert Smith with 25 yards in the game so far for the Buckeyes. These Buckeye fans are something. We're driving over here this morning, and we tried this restaurant. They opened up at 6 o'clock. What they have, to, what was the sign? 6 o'clock. Suds egg, and eggs. Egg, egg, no, it was something else. What the, <laughs> come on, Tubbs, come up with that. It was, uh, it was a really good. Kegs and eggs. <laughs> Six o'clock this morning. <laughs> Needless to say, we drove right to the arena. As Fly working the option, keeps it, and comes across the 42-yard line and close to an Ohio State first down. Linebacker John Milligan there defensively. This is a play they have not run this year. It is a trap option. Now they're going to pull a lineman a trap. He'll come down the line of scrimmage. And watch him make the little fake that fakes out the defender. He comes down. See, there's the trap block. No, freeze it right there. See, just free right there. He gave him just a little token fake. Up he goes, upfield he goes. Good job, Greg. And he's really not known for his option ability. A baseball player here during the spring at Ohio State, even though he's a senior football player, says he'd like to give baseball another shot with the Buckeyes. Some feel he may have a minor league future. Raymond Harris trying to get the first down for the Buckeyes, and this is going to depend on the spot as to whether or not the Wolverine offense is going to get the ball back. Yeah, defensive offensive coaches here talking about the problems being presented by Ohio State. That would be a shocker if Kentucky stuns Tennessee. Those poor folks down at the Sugar Bowl, they don't know who's going to be coming to town. Coming into this game it certainly looked like it was going to be Virginia and Tennessee but now Kentucky leading Tennessee by a couple of touchdowns that would throw the Southeastern Conference right up in the air that much for the first down Scotty Graham the fullback of 220 pounds is the kind of guy you'd like to give him the ball in this situation. He, he's been banged up a little bit this year but he's, he told me in the locker room yesterday he really felt healthy and he thought he'd be ready to have a real good ball game. He had 977 yards last year only 225 this year. Of course with the the addition of Robert Smith to the backfield he just doesn't get to carry it as often either. Needing inches for the first down. A broken play went the wrong way. Breaks it for a first down. 
I'm just telling Scotty Graham what a good job he's going to do in short yardage, and he goes the wrong way. You'll see this coming from the... You'll see that the running backs go this way on the option. The quarterback goes this way. Somebody made a mistake. Let's watch the blocking. Ah, uh, the running backs went the wrong way. The fullback. Scotty, you blew it. I know Greg. I know Greg Price smart enough to go in the right direction. <laughs> he just got that postgraduate scholarship. A first down for the Buckeyes. Ball on their own 46-yard line. They trail Michigan by a field goal, 6-3 here in the first half. Fly off a pump fake, going deep, incomplete. All of the intended receiver and David Key there defensively for the Wolverines. Did you see him make that pump fake? He made that pump fake. We'll show this to you as we run back with this replay, all 20. He comes back off this makes and makes a pump fake to freeze the safety here so he can get the one-on-one -on -one down the sideline. He's got the slot man going down the hole. Now watch the quarterback right here. He pumps right, turns back, and throws left. Oh, Sid Gilman, if you're sitting home watching that, I know you love that. He'd love to see quarterbacks do that. Second down and 10. Right. Is it picked up by Robert Smith, and he's buried at the 45-yard line by John Milligan. Take a look again, see if we can see who's at fault. Going back, he takes it back nicely, he has the ball. Oh, the fullback. The fullback and the quarterback bumped into each other. The fullback coming either a little tight or the quarterback opening up a little too flat, one or the other. This is not a well-oiled offensive machine as Scotty Graham comes off to the Buckeye sideline. Maybe that's a sign Fry's going to uh, turn it all on in the fourth quarter like we've seen him do so many times. Third and 12 for the Buckeyes. Ball on their own 45-yard line. Fry straight back. Avoids the pressure. Throws down the middle to Graham complete at the 36. Given that much time, Graham simply worked his way free. You can't give anybody that much time. You'll see he gets back there. The linebackers drop out. They have a stunt going on up inside. It's picked up nicely. Now he's flushed. He gets back outside. Presence of mind now to set up. Look downfield. There's Graham working in the zone. Again, experienced players. A 50-year senior throwing to a senior. He settled down in the zone. He didn't run through it. Good job by Ohio State seniors. Jeff Ellis in at tight end for the Buckeyes. Scotty Graham, number 35, back in at fullback. He is no relation to Jeff Graham, the talented wide receiver. Graham steps in motion, and the hands of Smith looking for daylight outside. Swings to the outside, and he's inside the 25-yard line before Beta Murray gets him out of bounds. Smith's best run of the game. You want to see a nice block by an offensive lineman. There were a couple of them, but Alan Klein, number 67, an honor student coming out of high school, shows he is more than just a smart guy. Watch this block coming up in front of you right there. A knockdown pancake block. He pinned him. Nice job by Alan Klein. Here's the big Klein boy. You know, he's just been moved that starting left tackle spot. He was rotating with Roy Nichols, number 63, and they moved Roy Nichols into the guard position. Got them both on the line of scrimmage. Raymond Harris is the fullback in front of Smith. Seven carries for 40 yards for Smith, and on the draw play, up the middle and across the 20-yard line. Well, coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report, Corey McFerrin will take us through today's college football schedule with scores and highlights. And Beth Ruyak is in Minneapolis and will report on the Iowa-Minnesota game, which kicks off a little later. And Keith Jackson will preview that Notre Dame-USC game coming up later tonight. And that's all coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report here on ABC. Second down and seven. Harris and Graham running backs as Raymont simply moves back to the tailback spot and Smith will take a break. The option, the pitch to Harris. Harris across the 15-yard line before Murray can bring him down. 
see this is the new offense they haven't run this year. They're trying to get a big play out of the running game with the option. You'll see him take the ball, fake to the fullback, come down, and when the defender comes to take him, he'll flip it out here behind the blocks of the two slot people, the wide receivers. So he gets the fake inside, he takes it to the linebacker, now he flips it out to him. See? Pretty quick what they're going to do is they'll take that pitch and let the quarterback keep it and nail him because he is not a running quarterback. First time you see it, though, this is what you're disciplined to do. Go ahead and force the pitch. The measurement leaves him that far from a first down. The Buckeyes inside the 20-yard line here today. And for the season, they have 26 touchdowns and seven field goals in those 47 possessions. Not quite as efficient as Michigan in terms of touchdowns and the number of times inside there, but still doing a good job. But I really think Ohio State's best football has been played over the last five weeks, and those statistics measure the whole season. Ohio State grinding the clock down here in the first half. Only a minute and 15 seconds to go. Robert Smith checks back in they have two downs to get the first down they trail it by three they're inside the 15. Harris good defense and he was got it. by Milligan it'll be close last week the first series they recovered a fumble Ohio State did, and they got down in this area and they ran an option a different style option and they fumbled the thing and gave the ball away they better not do that again today. Oh, Michigan would like him to do it. First down. Murray complaining that they should bring the chains out and referee Quinn saying I can see it from here. So it'll be first and ten for the Buckeyes. I wouldn't doubt now that Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator at Michigan, comes after him with some change up defense. Linebackers committed in dogs or something like that. William. Audible, audible. The fullback in front of Harris. Try to throw. Touchdown. Greg Fry to Jeff Graham. 12 yard scoring strike. He came up to the line of scrimmage. He saw the defense he wanted. He saw the strong safety up here on the line. He ran the tight end in the flat, and the, the slant pattern by the wide receiver hit him in good rhythm. One, two, three, fire the ball, got it there before the safety could get there. Touchdown. See, if you're going to play that coverage without safety help, you've got to get the corner, in this case, 22 Dotton, playing him inside. He was not getting in, inside help, or at least he didn't get there fast enough. Ohio State scores the first touchdown of the afternoon. Herb Street puts the hole down for Williams. He adds the extra point. Buckeyes 10, Michigan 6. Inside of a minute to go here in the first half. Jeff Graham leads the Big Ten in average yards per catch. Does a great job averaging over 20 yards a catch. Has 11 touchdowns in his career. Every ninth, tenth, every ninth reception, he's put it in the end zone. This guy is going to be a very, very high pick in the National Football League. We won't get to see him, I don't think, in the, the World Football League, Brent. Decision time for Williams and the Buckeyes as to whether or not to put it in Desmond Howard or Derek Alexander's hands with 44 seconds to go or to kick it short. Gerbeck and Michigan working with two timeouts and trailing 10 to 6. I'll tell you, they don't want to kick off to these guys because, like you said earlier, Desmond Howard leads the country in returning kickoff. Number one, the Big Ten. Number one in the nation, averaging 29.5. He's returned a 95-yarder for a touchdown versus Michigan State. They have a very good concept in the way they return, and people are, are stealing it, taking it off tape and running it themselves. See, they're kicking the little scribbers. It'll be picked up by Alexander. Surrounded at the 25-yard line and down. 37 seconds left in the first half. 
And let's go downstairs to Mark Jones. Mark. Yeah, guys, you know, um, Trip Wellborn underwent knee surgery, and he is obviously not playing in the game today, but he is not forgotten by his teammates. This is the forearm of running back Ricky Powers, who has Trip written in magic marker or some kind of tattoo. So he is obviously a part of this team, if not in body, then in spirit. I think all of us, Mark, at ABC want to send along our best to Trip Wellborn. He has such a marvelous spirit around that Michigan team, and he was knocked out and he will undergo reconstructive knee surgery following an injury during the Minnesota victory last week. He was coming down the sideline. It was a very important punt return for Michigan. And along that sideline, he suffered a knee injury and they were not able to correct everything with arthroscopic knee surgery. Gerbeck working against the clock, wind at his back, 36 seconds, and Michigan will use the conservative approach. Powers not wanting to risk an interception in this situation and giving the Buckeyes another opportunity for a field goal or a score. Let's show you exactly how Trip Wellborn injured that knee against Minnesota. He was coming down the sideline. Here he is returning a punt and watch the leg buckle. The right leg right there. See, it, no one hit him there before it buckled. I think it just sort of buckles. He went underneath him. Fine football player. He'll be back, though. A senior. There's an explanation about the clock. And Tripp had a chance to talk to his Wolverine players. He's one of the team leaders. This is what he had to say to them. Trip. Hey, all right, uh, everything's gonna be all right with me, but the only one thing I want you to win the last game, man. It's my last game, and uh, I want everybody to come through for me, all right? Now, I'm not emotional guy, right? Y'all yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, just gotta do it. Thanks for the time. Thanks for the time. One, right, two, you know what to do. Hail to the victors, body. You can just imagine the agony of a young athlete oh. like Wellborn watching this game on television. It just, it's not the same as being out there on the field in the middle of it when you can do something about it. Now he's learning what it's like to be a, a fan and, and watching his teammates. And of course, he figures to get an opportunity to play in the NFL despite that knee operation. He'll undergo reconstructive surgery and... Then he'll start to hit those weight machines and bring himself back for an opportunity professional. 34 seconds, Michigan using one of its two timeouts, and again, they elect to run the draw. Powers breaks free out to the 48-yard line. Powerful freshman runner from Akron, Ohio. Here's a kid, he came up. He ran for 2,014 yards a senior year in high school, and never carried the ball more than 18 times. He's gonna carry the ball more than 18 times a day. Believe me, Jared Bunch out in front of him getting the nice block, but you can see what talent this young man has, and can you imagine him two, three years down the road? An injured Buckeye kneeling down. May have lost his win defensively. That's Jim Peel, one of the defensive backs. And he'll come off to the sideline. 16 seconds remaining. Heel comes to the sideline. One timeout left. Gerbeck looking over at Howard, who was double teamed. He rolls to the right, checks Alexander. Now he's going to throw back to Powers. Powers and his. Almost oh. intercepted, and that's going to bring the first half to an end. That was a design-type play all the way. Straight drop back, delay rollout, throw back. Ohio State leading Michigan at the end of the first half, 10-6. here at Ohio State dotting the eye and for the Michigan game it'll be Cardiff Hall from Troy Ohio the tuba player coming out with a band major here he is take a deep bow Cardiff ah, I tell you 
Dick Vermeil. That'll stir your emotions and get you ready for Michigan and Ohio State. Listen, we've had a couple of big plays in this game. For Michigan, I think the biggest of the game was probably turned in by Lance Dotton defensively. Paul. Yeah, and the batted pass. Yeah, and they didn't get that much out of it. They got the three points out of it. But it was. It was a play-action pass. The ball was thrown in the seam and then tipped. You'll see Greg Fry making a play-action fake moving to his right away from the direction he's going to throw the ball. Now he sets up, looks back, he tries to lay it in the seam. It's almost there, but he gets it a little high. It's tipped, and there's Dot making a big play. Normally, you'd like to, in that situation, take it on in and score. They got three points. Inside the 20-yard line, they settle for a field goal. The only touchdown of the game was thrown by Greg Fry. It's audible on the line of scrimmage. He saw the defense he wanted. He got it. He executed it. Good game planning by the offensive coaches. Ohio State leading at 10-6. What must Michigan do here in the second half? I'll tell you, Michigan hasn't gotten into the game plan as described to us, as described to us yet. They've got to come after him with a straight drive blocking. We'll see what they do in the second half coming up in a moment. All week long, the Buckeyes heard from their coaching staff about the Rose Bowl. Not the Gator Bowl or the Liberty Bowl, but still the Rose Bowl. And if they can beat Michigan here today, and if Minnesota upsets Iowa or ties them, then the Buckeyes would be headed to Pasadena. But if Iowa wins and John Cooper wins, then Ohio State will go to the Gator Bowl. But if Michigan comes back here in the second half, and beats Ohio State, then Michigan will go to the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, and the Buckeyes will go to the Liberty Bowl to play the Air Force Academy. Even Coach Cooper's trying to be nice to the officials. You see him with a smile on his face. Some of the other bowls that are unfolding, and didn't they get into it this year when they were premature in making their selections? I guess it's like buying futures if you're at the commodities market in Chicago and you go down and buy futures on oranges and it doesn't work out you suffer the consequences and much the same thing happened to the sugar bowl so it's one of the last bastions of American capitalism and sometimes it doesn't pay off for you meanwhile J.D. Carlson with a pair of field goals for the Wolverines putting the ball on the tee he'll kick it off Ohio State leading it by four and set to return and Dante Lee up toward the top of your screen They've done a great job of covering kickoffs all year, only allowing a little over 16 yards of return. That's outstanding coverage. Good special team coaching. They want the ball in Lee's hands. Twist to the 28-yard line. The numbers show a fairly even first half. Each team turned the ball over. There was the interception by Ohio State. Michigan fumbled. That led to a Buckeye field goal. Yeah, they've been almost identical. I don't think Michigan has gotten untracked with their overall approach to coming into this ball game. They wanted to throw the ball. They wanted to run weak side, and they wanted to use the no huddle. We've only used the no huddle one time. We've got to give some credit for Ohio State. Maybe have taken them out of their game plan a little bit. The wind will be at Michigan's back for the third quarter. Thus, Greg Fry and the Buckeyes will get it for the fourth. Regardless, Fry on the first play from scrimmage of the second half hits Olive for a Buckeye first down. Corwin Brown there defensively for Michigan. Bobby Olive, smart receiver, play action pass. He comes down and starts. He wants to run a zone corner pattern across the area here. He sees it plugged. He reverses and comes back out and settles down. Good read. See him now, watch him come in there, play action pass. He sees the defender stopping up in there. He turns back. He finds that little hole in the zone. Intelligent receiving. Stabline carries the play in for Ohio State from the sideline. He replaced Olive. Graham, the wide receiver to the left, and the Buckeyes go to the air game. Oh, the middle to Robert Smith inside the 35-yard line before Corwin Brown can make the stop. Good execution. They crossed the tight end underneath. They crossed the tight end underneath that drew coverage and attracted people. You'll see him cross from the right to your left. You'll see Big Ellis cross there. There he is. See, he sets up. He draws coverage. Now here goes the halfback down the seam, and they don't throw to him often, but when they do, he's very effective with the ball in his hands. One of the places where they will miss Wellburn is after the catch. Trip Wellborn with great speed and running down a wide receiver. Raymond Harris and Scotty Graham are the running backs. Harris, the tailback. Harris, inside the 30-yard line. And he was dragging Martin Davis with him. He was close. If he'd have seen, hey, there was a little cutback back there. If he'd have gotten his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, he would have seen that as he entered the hole and would have broke it back. 
Stave line again bringing that play in from the sideline as Ohio State continues to shuttle its wide receivers. Michigan wanted to change a defensive player and could not get him onto the field. That was Dave Ritter. He had to turn around and go back out. Scotty Graham straight ahead to the 25. Mark Jones, what do you got for us downstairs? Well, guys, just a couple points from the locker rooms. In Michigan's locker room during halftime, a lot of ranting and raving going on, a feeling of what should have been for the Wolverines, a lot of blown opportunities. Meanwhile, with the Buckeyes, it was a very optimistic feeling, and maybe the most important thing is that Alonzo Spellman, for the Buckeyes, will be played even more than he's been playing in the first half. He's a lot better off than they thought because of the ankle injury. This is the type of game that can make you forget about a lot of pain. Buckeyes continue to rotate Raymond Harris. Now he is the fullback in front of Smith, who is the tailback. Third down and two for the first down. Fry showed some option in the first half. The fake to Smith under pressure. He throws to Harris and dropped it. Incomplete pass. He had real pressure in his face. He did a good job of getting up. And that's the first time I really can remember bringing the, the linebackers out there to force him quickly. You'll see. Now watch him fake. Now listen to this. Martin Davis getting a lick on him for the Wolverines. This will be fourth and two with Williams setting up to kick the field goal. Herb Street, the holder. The ball will be put down at the 33. So it'll be a 43-yard field goal attempt. He's one for one from that distance this year. Herb Street, a quarterback, to handle the snap. Gets it down. Long enough. He's got the three points. And Michigan trails it by seven. Ohio State 13, Michigan 6. And so far, Williams has been keeping the ball out of Desmond Howard's hands, kicking it short, kicking it along the ground, even preferring to go to Derek Alexander. I think that's a good decision. <laughs> Alexander at the 15. Across the 30. Bolts past the 40. Crosses midfield. And holding on on the back of the jersey, Chico Nelson able to bring him down. See, many times when you get that short kick like that, Brent, the coverage people are still sprinting full speed, and they don't come to balance in proper rhythm with the football. Therefore, they overrun it. By coming to balance, I mean drop your center of gravity and get in a position to make a tackle so he can't juke you and make you miss. See, the coverage just overran it. He did get some good blocking, but still poor coverage. 48 yards on the return. The ball across the Buckeye 40-yard line. Michigan's first possession following the halftime intermission. So far, they have settled for two field goals. Burbeck changing it up at the line. Powers, his freshman, is the tailback. He'll get the first carry behind Bunch. They swing him to the outside. Penalty marker Holding. is thrown as he made it across the 30-yard line, but there was a penalty flag on that far side. Normally, in that situation, it is holding. This is what I do think Michigan has to do, is just come out and go man-to-man -man blocking. Come out man-to-man -man and keep the line of scrimmage clean and give the good running back a chance to run. Let's go downstairs and hear from the very talented Ohio State basketball coach. Mark? I've got Randy Ayers with me, and uh, Coach, uh, this game is almost worth canceling practice for, huh? That's right. This is a great game every year, regardless of the records. Uh, both teams always come ready to play. So if uh, Michigan scores the win here, that means you guys are obligated to come back and win on basketball court. Is that right? Well, you know, we play them home and home every year, and it's always a great game, uh, whether it's in St. John Arena or up in Ann Arbor. So uh, we'll look forward to those two games this year. What about yourself personally? Last year you had a pretty good season in your first year as head coach. This year ranked 10th in the AP polls. Your thoughts? Well, I don't know if we're uh, that deserving of that ranking right now, but we're going to work hard. We've got all 12 players back, and we really like the, the uh, attitude that our kids have so far. Okay, Coach, enjoy the game. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. 
Young man from Miami of Ohio did a fine job coaching the Buckeye basketball team. Now it's Michigan trailing by seven. And Gerbeck back to throw. Has plenty of time. Overthrows Powers. <laughs> That little nose guard for Ohio State, number 57. He's not real big. He's only six foot two, 250 pounds, and that's not big for a defensive lineman. But he's jumping around in there, Brent, and he's driving him crazy. He's he's acting a heck of a game. Now you'll see him in the middle of your screen. You'll see him, boom, he gets it. There he is going around the center. Now he's in the backfield. They're chasing him there. He's been there all day. Now he's working all the way around, and they're still chasing him in the backfield. Keep after him, Greg. He's, Greg's a walk-on, earned a scholarship, honor student, all Big Ten, outstanding young man. Second down and 18. Ball at the Ohio State 45-yard line. Go back off a fake, goes straight back. Now under pressure. Comes over to the right and throws to Alexander, who stays. No, he stepped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It will be third down and about 13 yards for the first down. Maybe even longer than that. Gerback has done a good job in converting third down situations. They're third in the Big Ten at 43%. But I'll tell you this, third and this long, <laughs> that's really tough to convert. Coach Moeller giving him the signals. He calls his own offense. He plays. He does talk to the coaches in the press box, but he's his own coordinator. Denny Clark hyperextended left elbow in the early going, and they put a protective pad on it during the intermission. The hands of Powers, and Powers continues to battle, but he is short of that first down. Ricky Powers on a third and 13, finally tackled by Mark Pellini draw play he starts the play to the left he gets draw blocking there there's a collapsed defense up on top of your screen left hand corner hooks there number 91 got hooked in there he should not get hooked in there like that that's jason simmons just a young red shirt freshman he's got to maintain contain that was a good read by jackson for powers rather fourth down and one they like to use the wish wishbone look like this but they normally don't run the option Dennis Washington into the backfield and officials timeout because of the crowd noise. They're coming into the horseshoe here in Ohio. Tom Quinn will use the crowd noise rule. And a review of that rule. He didn't even need to request it. Quinn just stepped in and said, time out. Time out. Now, the clock will start on the snap, so there's no 25-second violation here. And if the crowd continues to disrupt the signal calling, then Quinn can take one of the three Ohio State timeouts away from them with Moeller flashing that sign-in from the Wolverine sideline. The fourth step would be a five-yard penalty for each additional, uh, additional infraction, so I kind of think they'll quiet down. Ricky Powers, the tailback, with 100 yards rushing today in 14 carries. John Vaughn started, but it didn't take Michigan long to turn it over to Powers. Normally in this formation, normally in this formation, they run toward the tight end side of the formation. He asked Quinn again. His time. He calls back. That's a second call noise. That's a warning. Now the next one, they'll deduct a timeout. Well, you know, if you're the home coach, <laughs> You're against all that. If you're the visiting coach, you want him to quiet him down. But he, as a home coach, is, hey, hey, guys, go ahead, keep yelling. But you can see now on the field, the defensive players for Ohio State are signaling the fans to quiet down and let us play. We don't want to lose a, a timeout, and then later on, we don't want to go to that next step and be assessed a five-yard penalty. 
went over with Coach Cooper on the Ohio State sideline. Oh, it's just not, it's not that loud on my side. It's just loud over there. <laughs> Definitely not as quiet as it will be for the Skins tournament, which <laughs> follows this game on ABC. The Skins, that game was on Thursday, wasn't it? Jack Nicholas got to come off that practice green to watch how his Buckeyes, Buckeyes are doing. He was a great golf player here at Ohio State, as he has been throughout his life, I guess, to make any difference where he was. infraction now would be a timeout taken away from Ohio State. The next one would be the five-yard penalty. They need less than a yard. Oh, with more than was necessary. Across the 25 and into the arms of Tobar. First down, Michigan. Did a good job of breaking the formation tendency from coming back away from the tight end. Good power play, wishbone look, full back, half back on the left side of your screen, going to lead. Bunch goes into the point of attack. Good isolation block on his part. First down, move the chain. The crowd alive as Michigan heads toward the closed end. the referees being a little nice in this situation. I don't know if it's that loud. It doesn't sound like loud up here. We were at a game a few weeks ago. It appeared much louder, and they didn't get that much cooperation from the referee. Coaches are helping him. He has taken a timeout away from Ohio State. Yep. And several of the Buckeyes are upset, including number 48, Mark Pellini. Yeah, you can see Cooper's upset now. He doesn't believe it's that loud. Well, Dick, let me ask you, is this a good rule? The crowd has now become very much involved in perhaps the outcome of this game, or should they simply be allowed to yell? Well, I won't tell you what the crowd is yelling right now. I can't use those words on air, but I'll tell you this. There's enough red jerseys in here, enough support, that I think it will quiet them down. It's a good rule. An expensive rule. Take another quick look at that crowd noise rule. Here it comes. An offensive team is unable to communicate. Quarterback may request legal delay. If granted, all right, after that, after timeout, clock starts. On snap, all right, 25 seconds. Referee request defense to silence the crowd. They tried it. All right, if ref referee agrees, second point delay. Defensive timeout charge. Next time, it's a five-yard penalty. First and ten for Michigan. The ball at the Ohio State 25-yard line. Powers the long setback behind Gerbeck. Powers cuts back. And Tovar, number 58, wrapped him up. But Ricky Powers is having a monster here this afternoon. He has now carried for 108 yards. Coach Moeller's got to get the ball in the hands of Desmond Howard and Derek Flower. Uh, Alexander, he's the guy, they're the guys that are supposedly the, have the ability to make the big plays, and they really haven't touched the ball much in this ball game. If you're wondering why Ricky Powers didn't explode earlier in the season, remember that John Vaughn rushed for 201 yards against Notre Dame and then hit UCLA for 288 more. And today he has carried three times for a loss of seven. He goes to the sideline and is replaced by Powers. Second down for Gerbeck and a Will Berlin. Broken Gerbeck play. Got a busted play, keeps it, steps into the middle and crosses the 15-yard line and close to another first down. Jake Cook there defensively. 
All right, Gerback, Gerback turned both ways. You'll see him turn both ways and talk to the running back. He's right here. He turns both ways and talks to the running backs. They don't hear it. See, both backs are going, I don't know which guy is wrong, but there was no one to give the ball to. Evidently, they didn't hear the audible. Third down and one for Michigan. Dennis Washington brings the play in from the sideline. The Wolverines have yet to convert a third down here today. They are 0 of 5. And Powers shakes Spellman, and it's going to be close. Good penetration by Spellman. Tovar cleaned up. You'll see right here, Spellman takes an inside slant. He didn't get picked up by the offensive lineman. Watch him slant inside. Here he goes. He goes underneath Skrepnik. See, Skrepnik had no help inside. He beat him inside, got penetration. Maybe they didn't make it. They did make it. First down. And barely. Beck conferring with Moeller, who as a player was 3-0 against Michigan. But as a head coach at Illinois, he was 0-3 against Ohio State. Longtime member of Bo Schembechler's staff, defensive coordinator, his son Andy. He's an outstanding linebacker with the Wolverines, now on the coaching staff at West Point. Michigan attempting to tie it up, needs a touchdown. They trail it by seven. Don't be surprised if they throw the ball out here on Vinnie Clark. He's all singled up, one-on-one. -on -one. Coverage is going strong side. Oh, man in motion, won't do it. Alexander steps in motion. The hand is to Powers, sweeping outside. Beats Ooh. the contained man before he's hammered by Pellini. Good tackle by Mark Pellini, the senior. Free safety, comes from a family of eight children. He knows how to fight for his life in the secondary. Here he is at the top of your screen. See, he's just stretching it. He wants to find either cut up or get outside. He's got it stretched outside. He's stripped straight arms, and here comes Pelini. Good course, good pursuit angle, inside out. Mark Pelini. down and long. Three-time Big Ten uh, academic award winner. Very smart young man. Michigan was very conservative inside the 20 in the first half. Here it is, second and long. Bunch and Powers and go back to throw. On the run, Tobar pursuing. Cut, but out of bounds. Howard with the catch, but out of bounds. With Benny Clark there defensively. Boy, did he leap. This... Here's Gerback, number 15, middle of your screen. He's flushed right now. Penetration upside. They pick him up inside there. He's flushed outside, and he throws the ball a little high and wide to the outside. Now watch this young man leap. There he is. He's out of bounds all the way. Boy, can he leap. He has a 39-inch vertical jump. Now, Brent, that is way, way beyond. That would have to put him in the 95th percentile in terms of leaping ability. Third and eight. Ball at the Buckeye 12-yard line. Michigan only one of six and third downs. Bunch is the lone running back. Howard is to the short side. They're going to come after him. Here they come. Gerback with a quick drop. Hits the hot man. Howard, touchdown, Michigan. job of picking up the, the the blitz he saw it coming the receiver broke in there and just stuck it right where he had to you'll see him right there here's the linebackers Tovar coming there's the outside safety coming safety blitz right there he read it they slanted inside touchdown good execution awfully good coaching by the offensive coaching staff JD Carlson with an extra point that will leave us tied if good Michigan moves back into a tie with Ohio State. Seven minutes and 13 seconds left in the third. This brand going. 
Michigan skill players compare with Notre Dame's is perhaps the finest group in the country. Now they kicked off away from him, remember, but Alexander's splendid 48-yard return set up that scoring drive. Gerbeck gets it into Howard's hands, deadlocked at 13 here with seven minutes and 13 seconds left in the third. Carlson kicks it off for the Wolverines, and Lee, back at the eight-yard line, will bring it out behind the wedge down at the 28-yard line where Greg Fry and the Buckeyes will go back to work. As we take a look at this last touchdown, the safety, instead of lining up here, creeps up, gets up in there, and he blitzes. The receiver sees it. He goes into the post like that. Touchdown. You can see that they're over here going to double up the slot. Here they are. Well executed. He sees the blitz. He sets up quick. He breaks inside. Now, 22 Polk should not allow him to get in there that easily. He should really be shutting the door on the inside because he has no help. Raymond Harris, the young running back, who will undergo knee surgery at the completion of the season in that tailback behind Scotty Graham. Greg Fry, the Ohio State quarterback. Throwing on first down. Had protection, deflection intercepted by Michigan, and Otis Williams inside the 35-yard line. The second interception by that secondary. From a quarterback standpoint, that's very frustrating. Both interceptions he's thrown today have been tip balls. Play action pass. He freezes people. He gets the linebackers attacking. One is dogging, and Milligan is going up after him. He throws this ball there and tip right through Ellis's hands. He's got to make that catch. See, he's missed a lot of football. This is Otis Williams. That's his first interception in, in his career. Young football player, redshirt junior. Replacing All-American Trip Wellborn in the starting lineup today. Jeff Ellis, who let that ball go through his hands, had been the starting, uh, starting tight end. He was injured last year, missed most of the season after a knee injury, and uh, it just he's not sharp. The ball is being brought back because his knee touched the ground. They are not giving him the return. The ball will be down at the 44-yard line. First down for Michigan. Burbank eyes the Ohio State defense. Alexander in motion. Burbank straight back. Plenty of time now. Deflected incomplete. Wanted Howard and Tovar was back there defensively for the Buckeyes. Number 58 deflected the ball. Well, Monday night football. Only a week away from the big showdown. And this one should be pretty good itself. Bills down at Houston to take on the Oilers. And then the night of December 3rd, of course, don't forget. 49ers and the Giants. Unbeaten. Watch, they'll both lose on Sunday. <laughs> Get out there unbeaten. Let's go. Gerbeck and Michigan tied at 13. Audibling right now. He has a double tight end, two wide out formation. He's audibling to the weakness of the defense. Here's Powers. Turn back. Breaks a tackle and slammed by Polini. There's a real war going on out there between Alonzo Spellman, the big young defensive lineman, and Greg Skrepnik, number 75, the 350 or 330 pound tackle. They're battling out there. Spellman battle them out and force that ball back inside. You'll see that from the top of your screen there. You hear, here is the big fella. All right, Skrepnik reaches out on number 75. He's got him turned out. He's got him blocked. He's got him blocked. The running back has got to get up underneath that. Skrepnik is going to go back in the huddle and say, get back inside sooner. Third down. Bunch steps in motion. Go back with time. Throws oh. and dropped by Powers, who had slipped out of the backfield and was covered by Tovar. And Ohio State with a big defensive stand after he's, the interception. He's a young receiver, a freshman, and you know what he did. He started to run with the football before he caught it. You could see it from all the way up here. He turned his head before he caught the ball. It sounds so fundamental to say, look it in, but it is so critical that you do it. As Kona, the Buckeyes set a return. He'll go for the corner down inside the five-yard line. What a marvelous placement punt by Eddie Ascona out of Montreal, Canada. We'll be right back to Columbus. But there's Jeff Bowman, and he knows 
believed that he could be the man under the gun down here. He's getting that punting foot ready because the Buckeyes will have the ball at the six-yard line. One of the Michigan players on the punt team attempted to kind of roll it forward, so the officials came back and put it on the six, and they'll try to give Bowman a little punting room down here if they can or sustain a drive. At least make one first down, but see, already they, they can still line up in their full spread punt formation, which is the punter needs 15 yards. They have that, but they'd like to make at least one first down. Harris is the tailback. He gets the call. Down at the eight-yard line. Chris Hutchinson, number 97, there defensively. You know, up here, you could almost read where they were going to run the ball because the offensive linemen are varying their line splits to get guys isolated on islands. And that time, the right offensive guard had about a yard and a half split from the center. Big hole for a linebacker to fill. Benote and Stablin dash in from the Ohio State sideline. Harris will come out. And Butler Benote, number 33, is inserted into the Buckeye backfield. And second down, they will run him. And he's out to the 15-yard line, just short of a first down. Big play, big play. Martin Davis making the stop. This is just the old power old play. They're going to double team at the point of attack. They're going to reach back. They're going to pull big offensive guard Roy Nichols through, kick out with a fullback. You look at him protect that football. He's a freshman, but he knows he, he's got the coach's contract in his hands, and he can't fumble it. Houston. Number 42 checks into the game offensively, and he is a load. He has been an isolated blocker in situations like this down at the goal line. Now on third and short, they insert him into the game. He's the lead blocker. Ooh. First down, Benote. Great block. To the 20-yard line, and he led the way again. Great block by the 250-pound fullback, William Houston. He only goes in the ball game to do this, and he did it. He's an isolation lead blocker. What he is is a short guard. It lines up in the fullback position, and he comes in the point of attack and gets the linebacker. Watch him. Just follow him. Boom! He takes him on, does a nice job on Eric Anderson. Eric Anderson sheds him and then gets over into the play. First and 10 for Ohio State. Five defensive backs in the game for Michigan. Dave Ritter checks in off the Wolverine sideline. And Benode becomes the workhorse in this series. Ritter making the stop. I wonder why they've taken Robert Smith out of there. You know, last year, the more, uh, last week, rather, the more he carried, the better he got. Ended up with, you know, his best game ever. 171 yards. Mark Jones just told us from downstairs that he's been limping a bit on the sideline. Okay. And that's the reason why he's out right now. Notice how the crowd has been taken out of this game. Second down and long for Fry. Audible. Audible. One, two, three. He's going to pop it out there. Fires complete to Graham for the first down. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. He's reading the secondary, and when he sees the cor corners back off, when he sees them back off, he's audibling either to the quick hitch. What I'm talking about here is see the corner way back here, this corner way back here, strong safety, free safety. When he sees that, he's taking his choice. You can see him audible there and to here. First and 10, ball at the Buckeye, 33-yard line. Scotty Graham back in at fullback. Fry to throw on first down. They were blitzing him that time. Complete to midfield where Bobby Olive makes the catch and is hit by Corwin Brown. Bobby Olive's having a good ball game. He had a great game a few weeks ago. He's double zone. He goes up inside the short man. Then he works out and he runs a little corner move on the safety playing him zone. Not playing him tight right there. And a very nice, delicate throw put right where he had to put it. In between the, the short coverage and the deep coverage. Stave line brings the play in from the sideline. Buckeyes move to the line of scrimmage. First and ten. They're due for the reverse. They haven't run that yet. And they really like to run it. But no doubt. Filling in for Robert Smith, and Mark, what's the word on Smith downstairs? 
Well, the word on Robert Smith is that from Dr. Murphy, the Ohio State doctor, is that Smith has a bruise on the outside of his right thigh. It's beginning to swell up a little bit, but because of the depth that they have, they can afford to leave him out of the lineup right now. They had Carlos Snow, remember, at the end of last season. He was forced out this year because that benign tumor was removed from his hip. Robert Smith, who exploded for that big game against Wisconsin, carried eight times against Michigan for 43 yards. The battle of the freshman running backs has clearly been dominated by Ricky Powers of Michigan here today. Both of them out of the state of Ohio. 115 yards. Audible. He's talking, he's talking. And Graham calls a timeout on the far side. And that's going to leave Ohio State with only one timeout. Coaches probably hated to see that happen. Well, let's take a look at what ABC has coming your way in prime time. One of college football's greatest rivalries takes the field as Notre Dame battles the Trojans of Southern Cal. It's a primetime showdown tonight on ABC Sports. Second down and seven for Ohio State. Cooper's team has gotten the ball into Olive and Graham's hands a total of seven times. Olive with four catches for 56 yards and Graham three receptions, 42 yards. 19 is the longest. Both Olive and Graham with a 19 yarder here today. The ball is at the Michigan 45 yard line. It's Ohio State 13 and Michigan 13. Inside of two minutes left in the third quarter. Ohio State moments ago using its second time out of the half and it was called by a wide receiver on the outside of the formation. Yeah, I don't know, have any idea why he did that, but uh, and I'm not sure Fry knew why he did it, but I think the wide receiver felt there was an audible call and he didn't hear the audible and he didn't want to risk a bad play, so he called the timeout to find out what was happening. This is a seven play drive so far. Remember, the Buckeyes are coming out from their own six yard line following the Ascona punt. The slot man off to Fry's left. Benote wrapped up at the 41 yard line by Hutchinson. John Peterson, the big offensive right guard at 292 pounds, did a nice job of pulling around the point there. You'll see him right here. Watch him pull around on this play. 295 pounds. How'd you like to have someone come and hit you on the couch at 295 pounds? <laughs> did a good job. Benote and Harris, the running backs. Three yards for the first down. Ball is at the Michigan 31-yard line. to throw. Gets good protection from the offensive line. Throws to his tight end, Ellis. Diving reception for the first down. Ellis is the tight end that was injured all last year. He's had the bad ankle. He comes in here and he just runs a little square in there. He's much bigger than he normally plays the tight end position. At way overweight, you can see the coverage people pick off each other in the man-to-man -man underneath coverage. It's throwing low and out in front of him. He's able to go down and and get the football. Jeff Ellis' first catch of the day for seven yards. Ball at the 34-yard line. Graham, the fullback. Change up. Audible. Audible. Now what Michigan ought to do is change your coverage. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to throw it. Fly. Throwing to Jeff Brown. Incomplete. The end zone was in his eyesight that time, and Lance Dutton there defensively. We showed you a little while ago why they intercepted, a uh, rather audible, and went to that short pass. I thought with this audible, they were going to run a short pass and go deep. Instead, they just went to this uh, deep slant pattern that was darn near intercepted. Very good coverage, in this case, by Lance Dutton, number 22. Did a nice, look at him get that right hand right in there. Real good job. Dotton earlier with an interception in the first half. He got that great leap, uh, leaping ability by playing basketball. It was a great high school basketball player. Second down and 10. Fly rolling to the right. Deflected. 
and hitting it was linebacker John Milligan. John Milligan is the fellow that missed the five games, as we said earlier, and he is an inspirational leader for this defense. They need him. He's, he's knocked down two passes prior to that one coming into this ball game, but you'll see right now, he's up there high. He saw the quarterback cock his arm, and linebackers are coached by linebacker coaches that say, hey, when he cocks his arm, if you aren't there, when he cocks, you leap. Good job, good job of coaching by Jim Herman, the inside linebacker coach. Hey, now it's Williams warming up his foot. The punter, he sits down, and now the field goal guy, he gets ready. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, don't try to figure out kickers, will you? Third down. We don't have enough time up here today. <laughs> the ball at the Michigan 34-yard line. The Ohio State passing game against that Michigan defense and fly back to put it up again deflected and intercepted by the Wolverines Eric Anderson picks it off and he'll be down at the 29 yard line the junior linebacker out of Glenview Illinois Eric Anderson came into the ball game with two interceptions boy I'll tell you when you throw three interceptions in one game you almost never win Ohio State has thrown three. You really have to be the better team to win when you throw three interceptions. Granted, one was tipped. The other one should have been caught. This one, it's a low ball. Trying to get it in between the linebackers to the receiver behind it. Good drop, no play action in front to hold those people like you'd been using earlier. Now, Anderson gets to be a running back, and he was a fine running back in high school. He ran for 30 touchdowns as a running back in high school. He's thinking about that right now, don't you think? And Bo and his staff making a decision to turn him into a linebacker, and it paid a dividend right now. The last three passes all tipped by that Michigan defense or intercepted, as was the case in that last one. The third interception, but Michigan were only three points off the first two. Here's Ricky Powers, wrapped up at the 25 by Big Mo Alonzo Spellman. Big Zoe gets it done as time begins to run out on the third quarter. The big offensive guard here, Dingman, is going to pull and try to trap, but the play is too wide, and he's being trapped actually right into the defender. Watch, here he is. Boom. See there? He closed down in there too much. Run straight ahead, guys. Quit pulling, quit trapping, come off, man blocking. the third quarter. They do not get the playoff. Gerbeck will go over to Moeller's sideline. We'll return with the fourth quarter of Michigan and Ohio State after this message and a word from our ABC station. We start the fourth quarter with Ohio State hoping that its lucky red shoes will propel their wing feet to victory over Michigan. The Buckeyes with a chance. Those red shoes. I don't like those red shoes. They don't look like they belong on football players. Here's Powers to the 25-yard line. They look more like Cinderella slippers. How can you be, how can you be tough wearing red shoes? <laughs> At least you're not pink. You know, well, here's a guy. He's got a combination job there. That's got to be one of the kickers. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> it's one, at least you're not pink. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, there's the punter, see? There's see, now, yeah. just what you say about those kickers. Yeah, they're they're confused when yeah. they get up. <laughs> Third and 14 now for Michigan. Wolverines 13, Ohio State 13. The winner certainly will go to the Gator Bowl. And in Ohio State's case, they can wind up all the way in Pasadena if they win this game. And Minnesota shocks Iowa up in the Twin Cities. And that's not impossible. They had a week. Gerbeck dropping back. Has plenty of time. Throws oh, and complete. Tremendous coverage Jimmy by Jimmy Peel. The ball was nicely thrown. It was very well defended by Jimmy Peel. Good deep squaring pattern inside the zone. He read it. He jumped it. Did a good job. Michigan moved to its only touchdown in the third quarter of this game as as Kona comes in to punt. Look at these, all these punters. Oh. Punting Same to Jeff point. Graham, you know, Brent, he's the number two punt returner in the Big Ten. He has two returns for touchdowns this year. He's a real threat. Not hard Under to pressure. Now. They came after him and it hits a Michigan player. It's down at midfield, but there's a penalty marker. Was as Kona roughed on this? It doesn't matter. There's a flag down, so somebody thought they did. You know, I did. You're in control 
of the ball game. You've got the number one returner back there. Of course, Ascona doesn't punt many balls here we can turn, but you're going to get the ball back in good field position. Don't screw it up. Here it is. Here's a take a look at it now. Remember, you can just run into him or you can really hit him physically. Oh, I know. They, they're going to call that 15. They've got to call that 15 because he really got to cross the leg. Yeah. See, they're going to, that's just, that's like throwing an interception. The punter in the If it's just a five yard ball. penalty, it's not a first down. Uh oh. I don't think Gary liked it. He thought it should be a 15 yard penalty. They're going to call a five. That's why Moeller exploded on the far side. Yeah, I, I agree with him. I agree with Moeller. I, I mean, he went across the guy's leg enough. Hey, I've seen much less than that call. Give it to him, coach. Give it to him. I'd be whiz too. That did not give the Wolverines a first down a huge call in this ball game you bet it. early in the fourth quarter not going after him this time that's a low guy if he can get that in his hands that's the kind you like to return but they've surrounded Graham great move to the outside and a penalty flag comes down they may have caught the Buckeyes clipping on the far side look you know now, now, now that's like Bo he's running out of cord I don't blame I'd be upset now Quinn's gonna come over there and he's gonna threaten a lot sportsman like conduct over there on that sideline it isn't gonna change there Gary so might as well go back I've seen a lot less than that call Automatic first down, 15-yard penalty, roughing the kicker. That's a judgment call. This is a clipping penalty on the return. Dick, your point was that the kicker was in a vulnerable position. If because you are stretched out like that extended. and you go across the leg and you hit the leg, it, it normally is called roughing the kicker. Now watch this. He gets, boy, he's a two-step punter. Boom, he gets, there it goes. He's out. See, his leg is stretched. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. That is a blown call by the officials. Blown call. There's 14, been a lot of those in the Big Ten this year. 14 minutes to go, and we'll be right back. Esports. Uh, the official and Moeller's ears may be ringing. Oh, I know it. He took off. Here's the court. Look at this. Now the court, he runs out of court, and he's going to jerk his ear off. <laughs> Whoa, coming back there. Come on, give him some more rope. <laughs> When I was coaching, I darn used to tear my ears off by the end of the season. Greg Fry handing it off to Benote on first down. And let's check in with Corey McFerrin on an update. Corey? Brent, they're smelling upset in Waco, Texas today. Baylor up 7-0 on Texas here. Robert Strait, first quarter, big hole, goes 15 yards for the touchdown. And the Bears in the Cotton Bowl hunt. If they beat Texas and A&M knocks off the Longhorns next week, Baylor will head to the Cotton Bowl. Meanwhile, Iowa, Minnesota, early in the first, scoreless game. Expect the unexpected 1990, I guess, Brent, huh? And Ohio State certainly... Ohio State pulling... For a win by Minnesota, Fry had an open man underneath, and he was hit as he released. Great defense by Mike Evans, number 92. Mike Evans played real well last week in watching him play. He's a walk-on. He's a guy that came out of school, no scholarship. He earned a scholarship. He leads the Big Ten in sacks. You know, he's one of these character guys. He gives it everything he's got on every snap. His linebacker coming outside. He comes up inside, and there he is putting the pressure on. Good job, Mike Evans. I love those kind of guys that just sort of fight their way through and earn their scholarships, not highly recruited in that. And I think that they end up being great leaders somewhere in our community. Third down and six. Fly, dropping straight back, gets the protection. He leaves it through behind Allen. They were in man to man coverage underneath and then back him up deep. Big Ellis is walking over there right now and telling the. Fry said, boy, I really broke open. You should have seen me. You never want to listen to too many receivers when they tell you that, but Ellis was right that time. He was really wide open. David Key was there defensively. Bowman trots onto the field for the Buckeyes. And Desmond Howard in the return. Very gonna, dangerous yeah. return man. Is he going to kick it with his red shoe or white shoe? <laughs> <laughs> Hope he doesn't wear an earring. They're coming after him. It was the white one that gets it off. 
and it'll be out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Downstairs to Mark Jones. What do you got, Mark? There's got to be a little good, got to be a little lucky to win. Coach John Cooper, the Buckeyes, has a little secret weapon. It's not a running back. It's this. It's a lucky Buckeye that he keeps in his left pocket for every game. He's been doing it for three years now, and he says he's been doing it since the time that he got the job. But one thing, if he knows that Coach Moeller has a Wolverine in his pocket, he's in trouble, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. 13-10 to go. 13-all the situation in Michigan. Coming up with a first and ten there at the 34-yard line. You saw that Illinois pounced on Northwestern in the first quarter. The Illini with an outside chance of getting into the Rose Bowl. They need a tie between Michigan and Ohio State to have a chance. And right now that's the situation. Ricky Powers pounds to the 38-yard line. Well, it started out in the first half as a battle of the field goals between Ohio State and Michigan. 33-yarder by Williams, and it was three to nothing. Then Carlson tied it up with a 27-yarder. Lance Dotton intercepted. Carlson kicked it again. That made it 6-3. And then finally the touchdowns came. Fry hit Jeff Graham. Then Gerbeck hit Howard. And that deadlocks it at 13. Howard's to the 40-yard line. Ohio State is lining up in the defense and then slanting the defense according to the formation that they are defending by game plan. If they'll slant one way, if it's a different formation, they'll slant another way, if it's another formation. Right now, they're slanting. And when I'm talking about slanting, I mean they take the lineman instead of going straight ahead into the def offender, offensive player in front of them, they slant at an angle. And now they're slanting to the strength of formations, to the tight end. They have third, buried it. Third and five. You go back, straight back with time, and he throws to Howard underneath. Howard to the Buckeye 40 yard line. Boy, if you get that ball in his hands in the open area, he is electric. He has great quickness. Just a little dump crossing pattern. He came underneath. Drop back pass. It takes time to throw crossing patterns. Fortunately, they got the zone that he wanted. See, no one chasing him man to man. Here he is running up there. No one around him. Now a 19-yard gain. Howard will leave. Double tied in. McGee and Diebel. Powers hit <laughs> as he comes across the 40-yard line. And Alonzo Spellman. Starting to stand tall defensively. 6'6", 265-pound sophomore out of Mount Holy, New Jersey. Folks, when he goes into a clothing store, he looks for shirts and slacks and walks out with short sleeves and Bermuda shorts. Yeah, with a shoe a size 18. He uh, is some physical specimen. I was talking to Dave Kennedy, the strength coach, about his big feet. And he said, you know, coach, you can't fire a cannon out of a canoe. <laughs> 40-inch sleeve. Gerbeck takes the powers. Back to Mikhail. Down the middle. Alexander's there, and so's Clark, oh. and it pulls it away. Clark, incomplete is the ruling. No, he, interception. Interception in the end zone. Change it in the end zone. Clark took it away. Vinny Clark with a spectacular play in the end zone. Gerbeck waited too long to throw the ball. He had him. He waited. Crossing pattern down the seam. He just waited too long to throw it. Very good reaction by Vinnie Clark. As we said earlier in the broadcast, he is the fastest man on the defensive team. See, he makes a play action fake. He comes out. Nice job of hiding the football. You'll see him appear at the bottom of your screen now. Here he is. Here's the ball, and you'll see Clark flash right there. Clark takes it. He has the ball. He takes it in the end zone. He has the interception, and now they're taking it out. It is an interception all the way. And a argument on that far sideline Alexander and Moeller not agreeing that it was an interception I think Moeller it was Brent. wanting an incompletion on this play now he's talking to Quinn the referee let's take another shot at it really low maybe we can get a little better picture of it Brent they make the play action fake do everything right they throw it down the hole. He was just late in throwing it, in my opinion. And he, there it is. It, it, 
I, I really believe it looks like Clark caught the football cleanly. He's had a couple calls he didn't like. Just take one more look. Let's see if we can be decisive here. Here's the ball in the left-hand corner of your screen. Coming down, drop. There goes Clark. He takes it. <laughs> it. They both caught the ball, but it looked like Clark caught it first. Where was he down? That's the next question. Oh, the momentum took him in the end zone. Now I think they're going to put the spot inside the five, and Quinn is going to come over here to Cooper's sideline. Don't try to compromise, guys. Make both guys happy. You'll have neither one of them happy. This guy that made the play didn't have no down possession. Oh, you got, you got one of you called incomplete. One of you called possession. He had it. There. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. One of them did oh, call incomplete. incomplete. The guy down here in the right end zone did. Right. The other one. Here's another look. Come on. See, the ball should be. <laughs> Really, the ball should be on the 20-yard line. When I saw it live... It had nothing to do with the three-yard line. When I saw it live, I thought he caught the ball. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think there was any question yeah. about that. I think it was an interception, and the issue is where to spot that ball. No way they could put it at the three-yard line. Well, it's only two yards off. Or actually, it's 20 it's yards either off. either got to be the one-yard line or the 20. Yeah. Ohio State, now we're we'll getting real conservative here. Now, let's go down and check in with Mark Jones on the Michigan sideline. Mark? Brent Dick, what Coach Moeller of Michigan wanted was dual possession and a touchdown for the Wolverines. His contention being that both guys landed with the ball and his man had the ball in the end zone. So, instant replay next year in college football? Who knows? Oh, I hope not. No, no please, please. <laughs> <laughs> there was dual possession, but I think it started with the interceptor's possession first. I think he had the ball first. But the ball does not belong there. It belongs in the 20-yard line. Second down, and 10. Graham steps in motion. Fly from his own end zone. Here's the Graham complete to the 13, trying to reach for the first down. It'll be real close. Now, let's take one more look at it. When Clark grabbed the ball, what Moeller was contending was that Alexander reached back in and had dual possession as they tumbled back into the end zone. Here it comes. The ball's coming down from the left side of your screen right here. Now he's got it down here. It looks like the offensive player is trying to take the ball out of the defensive player's hands. And the ball was in the end zone. Momentum took it into the end zone. It should have come out to the 20-yard line. But regardless, you feel it was an interception, which is the that's what it looks like from here. That's what it looks like from here. Now the ball is at the 12-yard line, just short of a first down. Michigan and Ohio State. The battle rages on, even without Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler. One of those neighborhood wars unfolds here in Columbus, Ohio. The names change. And it continues to rage on between these two. 9.39 left in the fourth quarter. Ohio State 13, Michigan 13. The fact that Ohio State can turn the ball over three times with interceptions and still be 13 to 13 is a real tribute to their defense. Benote for the first down. T.J. Osmond. Benote is running so disciplined in terms of protecting the football, it's restricting, I think, him as a runner. I mean, he's running like that ball is gold, which is good, and he's got both arms all wrapped around it, tied up in a knot, but it, I think that restricts him from just turning loose and running. This has really been a coming out party for freshmen. Butler Benote is a freshman. Ricky Powers of Michigan. He's dominated the game. Robert Smith, number 32, shaken up a bit and on the Ohio State sideline. So three talented freshman running backs strutting their stuff here in Columbus. Nine minutes left in the fourth. Graham comes in motion behind Fry. And Ooh, Scotty Graham pounded at the 15-yard line. David Key, number 26, stepping up there. 
good defense. I like the play of the nose guard in that situation. T.J. Osmond, let's take a look at the battle in the pits. Here he is, nose guard Osmond. He jumps around, sees a little slant move, comes inside out, there he is. Also a good job by Evans right at the point. But that jumping around nose guard is tough to pick up if you don't get help from your guard. Let me correct a mistake. I gave that ball to Scotty Graham. That was Raymond Harris. Now Scotty comes back into the game. Robert Smith was also there. Harris plays both fullback and tailback. Benote back in the game. Try to put it up. Screen. Trying to set the screen. Oh, oh a great defensive play by TJ. Good job by Osborne. He had eight tackles for a loss coming into this ball game. You can see why he gets those tackles for a loss. He's going to come right off the center's nose there. See, 94, he's working. Now he works away from it. He smells the screen. He quits pursuing. He comes down the line of scrimmage, reading the quarterback, and there he is. He thinks he might get an interception. Good job there, TJ. The ball is at the nine-yard line, so where they placed the ball after the interception now looms bigger and bigger because instead of coming out to the 20, remember, they put the ball down at the three. The Buckeyes are in a hole right now. They need 16 yards for a first down. They are in dangerous territory. I believe the negative things that have happened to them in regard to officials' calls are sort of motivating this defense. It seems like they picked it up a notch here in that fourth quarter. Fry straight back into the end zone, steps up, throws out of bounds, incomplete. They may rule that he knocked him out of bounds. David Key got the job done defensively against Ollie. It's a nice throw, high and outside. There he goes up for it like that. No, he'd been out of bounds anyway. Bowman trots onto the field. And Desmond Howard back deep for the Wolverines. Now, when you want to evaluate how good a punter you have, don't evaluate him when he's punting from his 50-yard line. Punt, evaluate him when he's punting five yards deep in his own goal area. Let's see what he does. This should give Michigan the opportunity that they have wanted here in the fourth quarter. Bowman booms one, drives Howard back to the 41 at midfield to the 45-yard line, where Michigan will put it in play with seven minutes to go here in Columbus. The Wolverines and the Buckeyes are tied at 13. From Honda. Seven minutes and four seconds. Despite three interceptions, the Buckeyes are tied with Michigan at 13. Wolverines with superb field position after the punt. No huddle. I've been waiting for this. They've only done it once, but it's been effective for uh, for them during the year. They might as well keep doing it. Gerbeck changing things up at the line of scrimmage. Powers, the lone running back. And throw on first down to Alexander. And he's inside the 30-yard line. Benny Clark brings him down. Let's get an update from Corey McFerrin in New York. Corey? Just what Ohio State fans want to see early in the first quarter. Minnesota at the three. That's Mark Smith pounding in. The Gophers have a 7-0 lead still in the first quarter. We'll keep you informed. And Brent, I'm sure the stadium there will explode if they announce this score, huh? Ohio State may be smelling the roses if they can put a stop on Michigan right now. First and 10 after that successful pass play. Gerbeck to Alexander for 17 more yards. Ball inside the Buckeye 30-yard line now. Here's the hand of Powers. Powers is across the 25 to the 22-yard line. The big thing they have to do offensively, recognizing there's six minutes, 30 seconds to go in the ball game. It's tied up, is don't make the mistake down here. You're already in field goal position. That could possibly end up being the three points you need to win. Just don't make the mistake. Don't turn it over. Keep it moving forward. One of the biggest plays of this game is going to be the interception. Forget the interception. It's where the ball was spotted. Ohio State could not get out. Michigan comes back down with excellent field position. That interception was the best punt of the day. Now it is second down. Gerbeck hands the powers. He busts the first would-be tackler. Boy, I'll tell you, they're taking chances, Ohio State. And that was the safety lined up outside tight that came off the corner there, Jimmy Peel. So it's a question of momentum and 
where Clark wound up on the interception. Should the ball have been brought out on the 20, or was it down? It was not at the three. There's no question about that. It's either down at the one, or the momentum of the interception took him into the end zone, and it comes on out at the 20-yard line. Or if it's a simultaneous catch, it goes to the offense, and it's a touchdown. Third down. Four yards to go for the first down. Burbank. Hoping to be heard on the outside. The wide receivers do not have to hear him. Crowd alive. Powers sprints for the first down and he's stuck. Again, they're getting good penetration. See, he wanted to cut back. He couldn't cut back because it was inside penetration. Red jerseys across the line of scrimmage. You see Spellman 99 in the middle of your screen. You see Smith, number 57. He's audible. He's going to run over towards Spellman. See, now, now you'll see penetration. See him come underneath there. Very quick movement. And they forced him on outside to run parallel to the line of scrimmage. Here comes the field goal. Carlson attempting a field goal into the win. The ball will be put down at the 28-yard line. A 38-yard attempt by Carlson. He's three for four from this distance. I don't think it's any good. Nope. Vinny Clark might have touched that. Four minutes and 16 seconds to go. It'll be the Buckeyes ball when you come back. The breeze blowing in Columbus is behind Ohio State. The field goal kicker, Tim Williams, has booted one successfully from 52 yards out. Four minutes and 16 seconds, and Williams already starting to think about it. He kicked a 57-yarder in high school. But first things first, Fry has been intercepted three times here today by the Michigan defense. He'll hand it off. They'll run on first down. Benote to the 25-yard line. Good, strong running for that young freshman running back. Next on ABC Sports, golf's most entertaining weekend. Jack Nicklaus, Greg Norman, Nick Valdo, and Curtis Strange. Big money riding on every hole. The classic event, the Skins game, moves to ABC right after Ohio State and Michigan. Harris and Scotty Graham are the running backs. That would make Raymond Harris the tailback. Three minutes and 42 seconds to go. Jeff Graham in motion behind Fry. Harris up the middle. Down at the 28-yard line, short of the first down. Linebacker Eric Anderson bringing him down. The Buckeyes will try to bring that clock all the way down and then let Williams put it away. Remember what a tie does to the state of Illinois. The fighting Illini would be left in the hunt for a Rose Bowl. If this game winds up as a tie, Illinois beats Northwestern, Minnesota upsets Iowa, the fighting Illini could be headed for Pasadena. And at one time during the year, we thought they were the best team, right? Linebackers were up on the line. Fly is back with time to beat to Olive. Olive breaks free at the 45 to the 47 with a penalty flag thrown in the direction of the far sideline. There is a flag down. Jeff Graham was over there on the far side. We'll see what happens after the catch was made. Clipping. I think they call clipping on Roy Nichols, the offensive lineman. What they did, they caught Michigan's linebackers all lined up in here tight. They ran action this way to create flow. They brought the receiver who's lined up tighter across the formation. You'll see how it works. This flow, see it? Here, now he's lined up tight. He starts crossing in the zone. The linebackers were lined up initially. The play action throws him even more. There he is running with the football. Little Bobby Olive, all 160 pounds of him. The clip was on Graham, the other wide receiver. You saw him right at the end of that replay come into the picture and hit the defensive player from the rear. The flag was thrown on the far side in the direction of the Ohio State wide receiver. Take a look at what happens here toward the very end of the play. Should Olive happen. now, watch coming into your screen. Here is going to be the clip, right here. There it is, yeah, he definitely hit him from behind. Third down, here's the toss, Harris 
to the 31. It is going to be real close. I don't think he made it. I don't think he made it. John Milligan. Getting Good penetration. Good penetration by the defense. Linebacker Milligan scraping off at the point of attack. Boy, on those kind of plays, you can't sit and wait for that tailback to get to you. You've got to go to him. He did it. I don't think he made it. Fourth down and short. Ohio State, remember, with only one timeout. They want to save that timeout to set up a possible field goal, but they have used it here. This is such an important play. Ohio State can no longer wait, and Moeller brings the Michigan defense over to the far side. Cooper discussing now, do I go for the first down? He only needs about a, what, yard, half yard, or less? Do I go for it? If I don't make it, I have to punt it to them. They have the last shot at the offensive drive. If you go for it and don't make it, you're already in field position the other way around. Brent, I think he goes for it. 147 left in the game. 147. Could be his last chance. He I knows have. probably that Minnesota has scored first on Iowa. His only chance to get the win Pasadena is to win this game. I think he goes for it. You know, the alpha in the back of his mind is that Indiana game, and when he made a decision late in the game, it ended up resulting in a tie, and he took a lot of heat. That's got to have an effect on you. The Hawkeyes kick a field goal, and it's 7-3. So remember, Illinois pulling for this game here to end in a tie. That's their only chance. You know, a lot of people have been assistant coaches for a long time say, well, there's no difference between being a head coach and assistant coach except the paycheck. I'll guarantee you right now there's a hell of a difference between being an assistant and a head coach when you're in that huddle as John Cooper making the decision. Here it comes. Fourth down. The Buckeyes to go for it. I agree with the decision. Out of timeouts. Here is where it's so important to have a fifth-year quarterback at the controls of the team. Fry has been around a lot of experience, and it'll be called on now, even if they get the first down. If not, they could be handing it over to Michigan. Need less than a yard. Fry kicked it. Michigan ball. Wolverines with a chance to win it. understand them running an option on that because they're not a true option team. Greg Fry, if he's going to run the option, he's got to get in the hands of the running back quickly. They were in a goal land defense. I guarantee you, Moeller appreciates him having Moeller, have, excuse me, Fry with a ball in his hand on an option play. Gosh, I know game plan dictates what, what you do, but you know, Coach Prothrow taught me this a long time ago, Brent. He says, when you're in a real tight situation, call him offensive play, go to the guy with the most ability and not the best play. Just go to the guy with the most ability. Michigan comes to the line without a huddle now. A minute and a half to go. John Vaughn has replaced Ricky Powers at tailback. He's in behind Bunch. He should be fresh. <laughs> Michigan staff will attempt to bring the clock all the way down on this drive. Bunch, who scored twice in the fourth quarter a year ago against Ohio State in the Michigan win, gets the first call here. Michigan with all three of its timeouts remaining. You know, Avon fumbled last week, and I think that's also one reason that we haven't seen him play a little bit more. He does fumble more than Ricky does. On second down, Vaughn cutting back to the 20-yard line and about a yard short of a first down for Michigan inside of a minute. They're already at a 37-yard field goal right now. At the conclusion of this game, we're going to be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team, and for the 20th year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of Ohio State and Michigan. So many of the players on both these fine teams really deserve that word here today. Now, 30 seconds. Michigan going to bring it down. Let Carlson attempt to win it with time running out. That's 
Powers to the 15 yard line. And more action coming your way tonight. Notre Dame and USC will attempt to bring you the same kind of drama that Ohio State and Michigan have here today. Notre Dame headed down to the Orange Bowl. The USC to the John Hancock Bowl. Michigan using one of its three timeouts. 19 seconds to go. We'll be right back. Speed ahead. The Michigan defense intercepts three passes and stops Ohio State on a critical fourth and short to give J.D. Carlson and the Wolverines a chance to win it here. Well, I'll tell you this, Carlson's been very effective inside that uh, 40 all year. Inside the 30, he's seven for nine. He's making his plans. Where to go to dinner tonight. That's how confident he is. First and 10, the ball is at the 15-yard line. Vaughn and Bunch, they'll try to position it. Right it goes it on at the 20. Now, Carlson has made 27 and 30-yarders. That would back in the first half, and he has missed a 38-yarder here in the fourth quarter. Well, he has, what, a 37-yarder to kick right here, 36-yarder to be exact. You know, on the one extra point, or the one extra point or field goal, rather, that was missed, I thought that Vinnie Clark, number seven, got a piece of that football coming around the point. He has that great quickness and real good acceleration, and he came around, and it looked like he deflected the football. Well, not only are Ohio State fans pulling for a tie, but how about the fight in the line I right now? They move into contention for the Rose Bowl if this game winds up 13 all. Meanwhile, Michigan, with a successful field goal, will head down to the Gator Bowl. There's so many little things that can go wrong. I was in this situation one time playing the Washington Redskins, and they snapped the ball back to the most reliable football player I've ever coached in my life, John Shira. He dropped the snap. <laughs> We didn't have a chance to miss the field goal or make the field. He dropped the snap. I mean, there's so many little things that can happen. And the first man out is the man who will snap it. Steve Everett, number 51, will snap the ball to Ken Solon. Steve Everett's making the snap. J.D. Carlson wins it. A huge win for Gary Muller. Ohio here this afternoon. And meanwhile, they are rejoicing in the state of Iowa. We'll be coming right back to Columbus in just a moment. We are back in a reminder that just a few moments you'll see the first nine holes of that skins competition. Iowa goes to the Rose Bowl with a last second win by Michigan here today. And we'll be sending you out for that competition between Nicholas, Norman, Faldo, and Strange. The Skins comes to ABC. Our Chevrolet most valuable players are J.D. Carlson from Michigan and Alonzo Spellman of Ohio State. And Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. For Mark Jones and Dick Vermeil, I'm Brent Musburger. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the drama that unfolded here in Columbus. J.D. Carlson wins it for the Wolverines, 16-13. So long, everybody.